Hey, 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 welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to Passions Podcast, the podcast where we talk about the soap opera passions. I am your regular host, Latara, back again with your new semi-regular host, clearly, <laughs> Air, Mr. Do- not Mr. Doctor, Dr. Eric Vera. Welcome it's back. All good. Thank you so much. Hey, if it's been, I mean, I've had so much fun this past few weeks. Um, and it's definitely been the correct week to uh, correct month to be here for. Yeah, you really lucked out on the like you really lucked out. I lucked out. No, I lucked out having you here, honestly. Oh, like a, it's a pleasure. Uh, I have loved having you on the show all month long. Um, and you're going to be sticking around for, I think, two more weeks. Yeah. Yes, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So before we get into the episode, we watched episodes 526 through 530 today, right? Mm-hmm. This week. Oh, and it was such a good week, y'all. I have so much to talk about. I have so much to say. I made so many like notes from my own mind, not just like typing yeah. down what the action was, but also like, make sure you say this on the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> but um, before we get into all of my opinions, of which there are many, I want to give a, qu- a quick shout out to all of our patrons over on Patreon. Thank you, Munashe, Marcus, Breland, Lisa, Sid, Randall, Hannah, Camelia, Samantha, Jeanette, Eric, Fantasia, Sean, S, Larissa, Maria, George Lopez, Fitzgerald, Lisa, and Jessica Jean. Thank you all so much for being patrons. And I want to go ahead and say um, that this week, which actually in the airing of this show, the show comes out on Wednesday, the, the we're going to have a watch party tomorrow, basically. Awesome. Uh, on, on Thursday, the 21st, and then we're going to have another one on Thursday, the 29th. For all patrons, all my patrons are invited, so get ready. We're going to watch some of these crazy episodes together and have a couple of drinks. And so if you're not on the Patreon, on the Patreon you're going to want to join so that you can come to the watch party. All right. Yes. So with Enjoy that, martini or three. It's fun. Yeah. We usually have a good time. We haven't done it in a while. I'm looking forward to seeing everybody. So um hopefully most of you can make it. Some of you, you know, hopefully the regulars can make it, you know. Yeah. So all right. Uh that's gonna be 7 p.m. Eastern time Thursday. So just be put that on mark your calendars, people. Perfect. Oh my gosh. Okay. So let's get into this week, y'all. We're going to start with a storyline that I don't care that much about. <laughs> and we will not care about for a really, really long time. I'm I'm caring less and less with each passing day. Oh, yeah. like, I just yeah. don't care about this at it's all rem- anymore. It reminds us of where we're headed, and it's not that exciting. It also, will get exciting eventually, but we need a key player to to be a part of it, and we're not there yet. I also feel like it has it came too fast. Like, yeah. I know I was, I, I know I was coming this fast. I know I was giving po- passions like props for like showing us David and then explaining to us who he was like pretty much immediately. And I still, I stand by that statement. However, this, his addition to the storyline came too soon after Ivy's whole thing with Sam, yeah. right? Like, I feel like we should have had a little bit of stretch here, but passions won't let up so that's what we're talking about if y'all haven't caught on we're talking about sam grace and i well not ivy not ivy sam grace and david (laughs) uh so we last left off where sam and grace are at the jail visiting david i guess david david has exclaimed that he is grace's husband um sam says he's lying he's just a crazy person david insists that he's not lying and he loves grace and has loved her long before sam ever even knew her um and then he asks her he says how how did you lose your memory grace and um grace starts to tell him like Uh. this lady well at first of all i mean it all starts off with where we left off last week with the with him his credibility is he has three facts that he knows about grace and that right away she's just like he knows me mm-hmm. he knows me and it's like <laughs> and, and I'm ha- i mean they fix it but i really i didn't talk about it too much last time and i was like you know what i gotta talk about this two it was three facts three random facts about grace and she was like yep this this guy's legit His this guy's on the out. level as yeah. he says 
And it and it gets and it gets worse because at yeah. one point they're about to leave and he's like, I know, Grace, I know something no one else would know about you. Then he says, You put honey in your coffee or put honey in your tea. Baby, so do I. That doesn't make yeah. me Grace Standish. <laughs> that is just one <laughs> Well, and I would sit there and I'm like, if he knew the tomato soup cake recipe, I'd be like, I was married. Now to that? That man, he knows me. He knows her. If he he knew she made tomato soup cakes to take to parties. And <laughs> what, if, what if that is like the one thing that has been a through line through Grace? Like, like she just remembered it past the amnesia. Like she liked that cake so much that even amnesia couldn't stop her from making it. I, I think that that's exactly what it is. Just like Sheridan and Luis were on the Titanic, they're always going to find each other, Cleopatra, whatever, past lives. Grace always remembers her tomato soup cake recipe. She will, no lifetime. matter what. In all lifetimes, she will always be making that Campbell's tomato soup cake. Blech. Yuck. Okay, so... <laughs> All the more reason to dislike her at this point. Um, yeah, and again, just the three facts are what Grace had a sister named Faith, uh, he, she was going to Boston and it was like one other, I mean, maybe the honey. Or it was, like, yeah, no, one. it was that her, la her, her maiden name is Standish. Standish. She, she has the, um, sister named sure. Faith and that the last time he saw her that she was headed to Boston. That's like yeah. literally all he knows about her. Yeah. Um, and then he says, he does say, you've changed, Grace. I... <laughs> You've changed. You used to be someone who would face their their fears and problems head on, but now you seem to just want to run from them. Sir, you stalked me and kidnapped me. I should be running from you. I well, should I mean, be. Yeah, it is so it is so funny because she, at some point she also says something about like, oh, maybe you were dating Faith and you think that I'm Faith and I'm not, I'm Grace. Um, and she's like, but she died a few years ago. And then at some point, uh, he's like, uh, whether this chump likes it or not, I'm your husband. I was like, okay, David, I wouldn't say, you're not saying it in front of, you're, you, it's real nice to say it behind bars where you're protected from Sam. I don't think you'd say it outside of it. Well, and here's the thing. You are truly at Sam's mercy in this little podunk town. Like, let's be clear. <laughs> Yeah. This man is at Sam Bennett's mercy and the rest of the, har the inept and corrupt Harmony PD. <laughs> Ain't no telling what they'll do to him. My mom's calling me. Sorry. No, you're good. It's, it rings on my computer. Let me just. Hey, mama. Um, Can I call you back later? I'm, I just started doing passions. Everything all right? Oh, girl, you know I want to talk about 90 Day Fiance. Yes, I'll call you back. I'll call you back. Okay. <laughs> All right. Love you. Bye. <laughs> she says she just wanted to talk about 90 Day Fiance. <laughs> See, Teresa, take a lesson and call your mama. Don't stress her out. Oh, we'll my God. There. We'll get there. Oh, my God. We will get there. Oh, Wait, See, Latara knows what to do. See, you're good. You're a good kid. I'm a good kid, unlike Teresa. I'm so glad that you said that. But anyway. Um, um, back to this dumbass brings, David. Yeah, he brings up an example. One day they were walking. I I had to fast forward some of it. It was boring. Walking down the beach, picking up seashells, and you said you would never forget that day. She's like, then why did I forget that day? I'm like, because you have amnesia, mama. Like, that is the primary <laughs> symptom of amnesia is that you, that's why, that's why you forgot, Grace. Yeah, you, you don't forget, you don't know, you don't remember your mama, lady. Like, yeah. you do not remember anything. <laughs> And that's okay. Like you have a, a medical excuse, but don't say, why did I forget? It was great acting though. She was like, then why don't I remember? It's oh like... my gosh. Everything's so melodramatic with Grace right now. <laughs> She's irritating. So <laughs> she, um, Sam finally gets her to leave out yeah. from where the cells are. He go, they go to like his computer and he does a quick little search, quick yeah. little, not Google search, but quick little 2001 search on his internet ask computer. Jeeves. Yeah. Ask Jeeves dog pile. Did you ever use dog pile? No, that was like our household. Um, my oh, mom was okay. like all about dog pile. I don't know why, but that was what we, we used. We Yahoo. Yeah. Yeah. We started using Yahoo later, but I feel like Dogpal was the one of like the really, really early ones. I wonder if they're still around. Whatever, it doesn't matter. They're probably definitely not still around. Anyway, um, yes, 
she he goes and does like a, he's searching something on the computer and he's like got it there's yeah. an article written about us and um after there's been a lot of articles written about us after our house sunk and they say that so passively yeah. after our house was sucked to hell yeah big deal there were a lot of articles written about us and i just found one that actually talks about your mysterious past so i'm sure that's how this man knows all of these things about you because that's what grace like you said grace knows these here's these three random facts about her and yeah. thinks that this man knows her but apparently it was also written in an in an article somewhere so he yeah. it is feasible that he would have if he saw her picture and became kind of obsessed with her that he would try and find everything he there is to know about her yeah and good um, for sam i mean that's good on him that he found out like this is common common truth everyone can know this about grace it's not like it's something that he just made up like he like he just had to know no multiple people know this so then they go back in to the the jail cell or whatever and hold on, sam, hold on. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, now it's my turn oh look it's a guest appearance you're this is, Hi. My, this is this is a big fan of Pilar. And Hello. And we're going. To, she's going to the flea market. She told me. <laughs> oh, I love the flea market. Have fun. We're just we haven't gotten to Rebecca and Pilar yet, oh. but you. I showed her the clip of Rebecca and Pilar. Oh. Okay. And you liked it, right? Yeah, I did. <laughs> oh, Pilar. <laughs> yes. All right. Bye. Nice Bye. To nice to meet you. <laughs> Oh, so, she's so a, cute. Yeah, she just made a cameo appearance. Look at both that's, our moms on the podcast. That's so sweet. I know. Should I leave those in? Should I leave those spots I think, in? I think you have to. <laughs> that is so funny. And I had told them specifically, like, hey, are you good with the TV? Are you good with everything? Like, do you need anything? What's funny is she could have easily texted me, but uh, I appreciate I the cameo appearance. And now it's. No, that's so sweet. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Lord, <laughs> uh, I don't yeah, know. I'm like so, beaming. I don't know why. Like that's just so sweet to me. Okay, you just get a boost when you're when mamas enter the room. Yeah, I know. So David, I'm sorry, Sam wants yeah. to go back in and kind of accuse David of having seen this article, and that's why he knows these these things about Grace. He wants Grace to stay behind, to stay out. Um, yeah. but she insists on going in, which I, I think is fair. This is about her. So they go back in. Sam says, ha, 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 gotcha, buddy. You read this article about my wife, yeah. and that's how you know all of these things. And David's like, no, you're wrong. I, yeah. I know a lot of there's. I, I know plenty about Grace. It's just that all of my proof has sunk to the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I started to think, because, okay, so he um, tells her that she's not facing her problems head on. I, I started to wonder... Does he not know anybody else who knew Grace before that's, she had amnesia? Yeah, that's just like I, again, Sam is, has is every, excuse me. Sam has every right to be so judgmental and so like skeptical of this person because you have to have, I mean, we talked about the last time. I mean, there'd have to be some official record of their marriage. There'd have to be something filed with the city somewhere wherever they were. So this is just all too, it's all bull, but it's like- silly. Yeah. And, I mean, honestly- that Grace is so, so willing to be like, oh my God. Like if, it, the honey and the tea thing is so funny. And she even, the, the great acting, uh, God bless her. She was like, I wonder how he did know I put honey in my tea. This was like, and Sam says to her, um, it's a lucky guess. Yeah, <laughs> like most real. people put honey in their tea. He said milk or something or like what? A, yeah. a if he had been know. like, you put vinegar in your tea, I'd be like, oh, yeah. well. Oh, yeah, I don't do, yeah. <clears throat> well, that so. is an odd thing. Yeah. If he was like, you like hard boiled eggs and pickles together, like, oh, okay. Okay, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. But honey in your but tea, that's again, nothing. We, I have to, I, I've never suffered amnesia, so I don't know if she was a completely different person back then. I mean, I would, you know, I don't know what nature versus nurture does after amnesia. Like, do you still, are you still you after that? Will you begin to change after, you know, I don't know what that is. So maybe she's just, 
Maybe she's that fragile. I'll give her that. I'll give grace. That's some... a fair. That you know what? That's a fair analysis for sure. I'll I, give her some yeah. grace. Um, we'll give Grace some grace. So he says that um, he just wants the chance to rekindle what they had. Like, yeah. what are we talking about here? What are we doing? He asks her to give him the chance to rekindle what they once had. Sir, she has a 20 year marriage with this other man and a whole ass family. What are you talking yeah. about? And the fact that it seems that Grace wants to even entertain this for even a second is so problematic for me. I, I agree with you. I could chalk it up to wanting to know about your past. That would drive me crazy if I didn't know anything. And maybe there's this one person who holds the truth or holds a key to some of getting to know what my life was like before this blotch of, of darkness, right? In my head, I can do that, but that's not even how she's coming about it. She really is like, maybe I need to be with, I mean, the way I'm I'm being sold to it is that maybe I need to be with this man. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I should respect my marriage. No, like the easiest way into that world would be if he has secrets to my past, I want to know. But if yeah. he doesn't, then get out of my life. But that's not how she's that's not how we're approaching the storyline. At all. They're not, you are absolutely right. We are not playing this as if she just he's a he's a clue to her yeah. past and that would work for me if she was like i'm interested in him because he's a clue to my past yeah. <clears throat> i'm sorry if she was just like i'm interested to him in him because he's a clue to my past and i don't want a re romantic relationship with him at all but i i could i could see how them getting to know each other in this new capacity could lead to romance right yeah. i would be i would be okay with that with her learning about who she used to be and then and then they just kind of naturally get cl grow closer together and then she exactly. feels torn between i could i could be okay with that but this whole like just bomb on her whole life of well you were married to me first so you belong to me and then her saying well i need to honor my first marriage if there is truly a first marriage does not fly with me it doesn't work for me no it doesn't work for me so no. i i agree Great. with you 100 percent, 100 percent. um child he wants to rekindle this and, pisses sam off of course well and it makes me again i fast forward through a lot of this just because it it was so repetitive it was like but how do you know? How wouldn't I know? Don't you want me to be in your life? So we did a lot. So much to the point where I'm like, first of all, passions love spending weeks on a single evening, but we jumped to the next morning, which I was like, whoa, wasn't expecting that. Honestly, the thing is, how much more could we do in this day? Like, here's the thing. It turned to night at a certain point, Father Lonigan had one at one point said that he had another wedding to officiate, but he never did do that, did he? Oh, yeah, no. We <laughs> just think, went on I through could, the night. I wish I could have seen what happened with that wedding because if we are, we started off in the morning, Ivy was stuck in the Crane Mansion for, for the whole day. Then eventually, they mid afternoon is when I'm assuming this wedding took place. Maybe around like one or two o'clock. Mm -hmm. Then it never happened. Then it turned into night. So and then we never saw that other couple. Like, <laughs> yeah, nobody so... got married yesterday. <laughs> nobody got married yesterday. There just wasn't much more to stretch out. I don't think in this day because this whole day was supposed to be about the wedding. Yeah, and then we get the the nighttime situation. Like it turns to night. Like they could have stretched it out more dates, given us more daylight, yeah. but they didn't do that because they're just trying to rush things along all of a sudden. Yeah. All of a sudden we are moving at light speed. Uh -huh. It's it's ridiculous in, in every storyline. So yeah. uh, let's finish this one. Yes. Yeah. Um, great. Actually, before the next day happens, Grace okay. and Sam go back to the wedding, <laughs> go oh, back to this right. disastrous yeah. wedding yeah, and right. bring the Russells up to speed on what's going yes. on with David and the Russells bring them up to speed on what happened at the wedding. Right. Yeah. But as Grace is bringing uh, Eve up to speed because she's separate from, you know, they do yeah. girls versus boys kind of thing in this show. As Grace is bringing Russ, not Russell, <laughs> Eve up to speed, um, she gets really upset. Like she gets yeah. very deeply unsettled because, she, and you can tell that she's worried that she's going to have to leave Sam. 
And I just don't get it. I don't, mm, whatever. Again, She's fragile, could, like you easily, said. You, yeah, you could easily have chalked it up. I, again, I, why, why was I not writing for them in 1990, what, 2001? She could have just easily been like, I'm still fearful of that premonition that I had where this man is going to mess up my th you know, things with Sam. No, she's saying, like, I feel like I'm going to end up going with him. It's like, what? How are you How are you even there right now? Especially, and you know what? It's frustrating, but this whole, like, Ivy and Sam thing that she just really laid on thick and, and rightfully so to Sam, like, how dare you? How dare you? But then this other man comes in and now she's like, well, well, gotta go. Like uh, This other creepy random man who yeah. kidnapped her. Yeah. At least, like I said before, at least Sam remembers Ivy. Yeah. Like, and had some love for her. They have a child together, for God's yeah. sake. Like, yeah. <laughs> Uh, is yeah. is the two situations are simply not the same. Yeah, she's no. a pro. She's such a problem already. Oh gosh, I'm sorry, Gr I'm sorry, Grace. I was on your side, but no longer. All right. So now we can skip to the next day. Um, they're all like in the kitchen at Tabitha's house because they live at Tabitha's house. And this poor, poor Tabitha. I feel bad for Tabitha because her house, her house is full of people. Her house is full of people. Can you imagine you've lived your existence pretty much by yourself with a, a, a her, with her occasional suitor and a couple of Timmy dolls, but like and Fluffy and the boys in the basement? That is your life. But then you have a, a slew of teenagers running around your house, like no privacy uh, whatsoever. How unfortunate for Tabitha that like this house is and it's the, like, full mortal, of one of people. them is her mortal enemy, Charity, like living mm -hmm. inside her. Right. House. Which I bet when we when we get there, I will delve a little bit deeper into it. But I had a moment today while I was watching the episodes when I was like, why doesn't Charity ever get any like bad feelings about Tabitha's house? Oh yeah. About the basement. About Tabitha. Oh. About the doll. Like why does yeah. she she doesn't get any bad feelings about this like seat of evil that she's like living in, den of iniquity that yeah. she lives in. <laughs> but how, like how does how, Ross how does Ross have a better read on Tabitha than Charity does? How do her premonitions work? I don't get it. You know what? We'll get there when we when we get there. But um speaking of charity, the next day Grace asks Charity if um her mom, Faith, yeah. ever mentioned someone named David to her. And Charity says, Nope, don't think so. Yeah. And she does this in front of everybody. Sam, the kids, everybody. And of course, Jessica was like, David, David's the name of that man that I checked into the B and B. What's going on, Mom? And yeah. Grace is like, Don't worry about it. It's none of your business. Then why did you bring it up in front of everybody? You know what? God bless Jessica. She doesn't have very much to do often, but you know what? You made me realize how traumatized she is. She's very traumatized, and like that girl has to deal with stuff that her mom, like her mom. A, a normal adult would probably keep something like this from her kids until she figured out what was going on. Now she's just like, this is what's going on. I mean, their parents just got back together and Jessica was like really devastated when they were apart. Like she, yeah. Kay didn't really care that much because partially because she didn't have her soul, but Jessica was really <laughs> upset. <laughs> That's so funny the way you delivered that. It's true though. <laughs> like she, Jessica, Jessica was really upset. Um, and she was really happy when they got back together. And she, I think it just happened and they're already on such like tenuous ground that why would you do that to your kids? I don't know, start mentioning this random man. Anyway, Sam says that he wants Eve to do a psychological, a psychological workup on David to prove, and I quote, that he's a nutcase. That yeah. he wants to prove that he's just a quote, nutcase. Yeah. And, um, okay, Eve is, I know I've done, I've said it before, Eve's every doctor. Eve's every doctor. It's all in Eve. And if there any assessment you need done, baby, she does it naturally. Blood pressure, okay? She can do a CAT scan for you. and But she also does psychological exams, apparently. Which, this is psychological exam. So, let's skip to that. She goes to the jail, sits down with him, Hannibal Lecter style, okay? <laughs> and he, did, and he did give those Clarice vibes. Hello, <laughs> Dr. Eve. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I know why you're here. <laughs> like, <laughs> God. He tells her, he says, um, 
I know I know why you're here and I know that I can see by the look on your face that you also know that there's nothing wrong with me and that you can tell that if Grace wasn't married to Sam that I'm just the kind of man that she would be married to. Eve is like speechless. <laughs> yeah, I'm like Eve has no poker face. She looks terrified in her face as she's talking to this man for Grace. <laughs> And I'm like, come on, Eve, hold the cards closer to your chest. Yeah, and she gives him this exam, and it's literally a paper test. That's not a psychological exam. Like, that might be one part of a psychological yeah. workup, or, you know, but that is, she, girl, are you going to do any talking to this man? Are you yeah. going to ask him and any? Show some Rorschachs or ink blots or something. Show some something. of those things. Yeah. At least on, I will say, here's what I'm going to say about Passions versus Days of Our Lives. Because I started watching Days of Our Lives recently, again, like just uh -huh. randomly. And which, y'all, when I, I dropped in, and if y'all know these names, then you will understand why this is ridiculous. I dropped in, and Kate, Marlena, and Kayla are all in heaven, like, and, like eating and drinking, like, but they're not actually dead. And there's, I, I was like, what the fuck is going on on this show? So I had to keep watching, obviously. I remember the name Marlena, that, that name. Well, I want to talk about Marlena Evans, actually. I want to talk about Dr. Marlena Evans, because you know what they never, ever, ever did on Days of Our Lives? They never made her anything other than a psychiatrist. Like, yeah. she's Dr. Mar Marlena Evans, and she's a psychiatrist. You go to her for psych yeah. stuff, right? And I wish they would have a like a dedicated psychiatrist on this show because yeah. Eve cannot. It just is ridiculous that she's going to the prison, like going to the jail to do psych evaluations on a psycho stalker. She's a general practitioner. Okay. I'm trying to give him a sedative. All right, let's begin this exam. First, Hello. Take yeah. the sedative. <laughs> First, you need to take this and this. Actually, we're gonna we're gonna hook you up to an IV. Don't worry, it's yeah. nothing. It's nothing too much. It's just a just a little morphine drip. <laughs> like, take the edge off. Yeah. <laughs> now I have some I have some questions to ask. Okay, no. So she doesn't ask him any questions. She gives him a paper yeah. test of like ten pages stapled together. He takes the test. She gives the test to Sam and says, I'm sorry, Sam, this test, the results of the test prove that he's perfectly sane according according yes. to this test. Um, so that's where we are with them, honestly. And, Anything uh, else? And, uh well, Sam just ends it with like, he may have passed your test, but he won't pass my lie detector test. Yeah. Um, that's where we're headed. And yeah, he Sam says he wants him to take a polygraph. Line. Yeah. Yep. So, okay. Good luck with that, buddy. Good luck with that, bozo. Yeah. I feel, I, I, uh, I kind of feel the Sam. I don't feel for oh, him too bad, though. No. I mean, but I, I'm happy that he stayed level headed. I will say at one point at breakfast, when she was at, talking to Charity and, and Jessica, he did some great acting. He, he had no lines. He just had to stand there and he looked appalled. He really looked like, why are you talking about this guy? Like, I already told you this is bullshit. And he 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 just did it with his face. And I was like, hey, there he is. I mean, he's I've always really enjoyed him as a performer. Um some Who wouldn't? Little... Hubba hubba. Hubba. <laughs> hubba, hubba. <laughs> yeah, no, but he but he just looked at her like first thing in the morning, like yeah. I fixed Tabitha's door, which we'll talk about in just a little bit. Oh like, my positive. god. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave so all of that Tabitha yeah. Timmy Norma stuff to you. I hope you already know that that's where we're headed here because I took minimal notes on all okay. the shenanigans. Minimal I, notes I, on yeah. all the shenanigans. Okay. Because I literally think I just typed shenanigans in Sue. Yeah, I think that's is, what I wrote. A lot of that. Okay, so now we're ready to move into the, the real meat of this week yeah. and subsequent weeks. Honestly. Um, this wedding, this disastrous double wedding that is no yeah. more, honestly. Yeah. I mean, there's a little bit of a question if it will be turned into a single wedding. Um, but eventually, there is no wedding for anybody. Yeah. So let's let's talk about it. First of all, to, we pick up Teresa is, has run out of the church. She's running out of the church um, because she's eh, basically she's caught. She didn't send the stuff to the tabloid, which we know she didn't yeah. send that to the tabloid. However, Ethan is now asking her point blank if she knew or when she found out that he was a wasn't a crane. Yeah. And yeah. that puts her into a, a murky gray area. And she instead of and I, I can't I 
I can't be too mad at my girl because she's 18. Her whole world just fell apart. I get that. But why did she run away? She that because she's eight because she's 18. You go. She ran away because she's a child and she has no clue how to navigate this. I'm 34. So I definitely would navigate this very differently. I never would have run out of that church. Yeah. I, you know, no, I already... and, it's, and, and that's what Sheridan and Luis have a conversation about. They're like, what well, Sheridan is like, why would she leave? And Luis is like, yeah, it makes her look guilty as hell. He apologizes yeah. to Father Lonigan for saying that. Um, but I, it, so reasonable questions. Why would she run away? And, but like you said, yeah, she, her whole world fell apart. She didn't know it, how to handle it. No, she didn't know how to handle it. She ran out. I, get, I I give her grace because, like I said, she's 18. She's a child. She really shouldn't be getting married anyway. Um, yeah. And so Ethan runs after her. She runs out. Ethan runs after her and catches up with her. Yeah. A Chatting mean, with Paulo. And I want to say this. This is all going to be very complicated and convoluted because there's yeah. a lot. There's a lot happening. A lot of intersections. Right? a lot of intersections a lot of things happening that are important conversations to be having so it's like i can't skip over them and they happen back and forth like you don't get all of one at once and then one person comes out of this conversation and goes into this one but then comes back to a different one so it might get a little it might get a little weird but uh i'm gonna do my best we'll, we'll do our best so ethan catches up with Teresa, um but then my notes skip to pilar uh -huh. who sees Gwen on the phone and gloating. Gwen is gloating about, and obviously to Rebecca, gloating about the fact that, you know, that Ethan's never going to be with her now, yada, yada, yada. We, we won, basically. Pilar comes up to her, snatches that phone out of her hands. Yanks. Yanks, Yanks. it out of her hands. And she says, I don't know what you were talking about, but I think I can guess who you were talking to based on the fact that you were, I could tell that you were gloating. And I'm, I'm sure you were talking to your mother about how you all ruined this. And this is, you did this. Basically, she kind of accuses um, Gwen and Rebecca of being the catalyst here of what has had the, the, you know, behind what happened here. Oh, and I was livid. And let me tell you, you know, I, I bring up Gwen a lot. I like Gwen as a character because it provides us juice. Right. But when she was like, what do you think you're doing? That's mine. You should be ashamed. I typed down Gwen, you classes bitch. I was, I was like, you're, you know, full well that you are the troublemaker here, that you did this, but she still feels it's appro appropriate for her to talk to Pilar that way. And I was <clears throat> really angry. I got so mad this week. I'm, yeah. I want you to know, I am about to be up Ivy Crane's ass oh, this I mean week. Too. I really <laughs> <think> <laughs> like, I'm about to, Ivy and I love her, but I'm about to be on her ass this week, like, cause she, mm, she really showed her true colors. Yes. She really did. Yeah. Okay. In fact, that's what happens immediately after. Yeah. Immediately. Yes. We're getting right into it. So Pilar says, how dare you assume the worst of my daughter? This is a lie. She did not send that story to the, to the tabloid. Ivy comes in and like comes at Pilar saying, oh really? Then why does the paper have Teresa's address on it, her, her email address on it. And she's very accusatory of like yeah. Pilar. And then Pilar says, I don't care. I know my daughter did not send that. Gwen then butts in and says, oh, it's interesting that you're denying that Teresa knew, you're, that you're denying that she um, sent it to the paper, but you're not denying anything about Teresa knowing about Ethan's paternity before he did. And let um, us all be clear that Pilar continues to clock both of them because she's like, but how come how come you happen to know so much about Ethan's paternity? Like Pilar is like tit for tat with both of them, which I'm very grateful for because mm -hmm. Teresa needed somebody in her corner, especially with those two working together now. Yeah. And Gwen says to Pilar, obviously she got the truth from you so she could steal him from me and marry him. And Pilar says, you are so wrong. Yeah. And then Ivy says, if Teresa didn't send the email, then who did? And Pilar says, that's a good question. And then she turns a bombastic side eye on yeah. to Gwen and says, yeah. that's a good question. Hmm, I wonder who, right? <clears throat> So Pilar then tries to throw suspicion onto Gwen saying, you seem to know an awful lot about this, this tabloid business. Um, 
considering you sh honestly you shouldn't even know this much why do you know so much about all of this basically is what she says yeah um but ivy comes into gwen's defense and says how dare you she says to she like yells at polar how dare you blame gwen when we've all seen proof that the emails came from your daughter's computer the computer i gave her yeah. i mm -mm. Oh, I wrote I, I wrote this down. I hate the way Ivy's talking to Pilar. I love her, but fuck her. I wrote that down verbatim. And God bless Eva um Eva uh Tama, Tamarargo. I, I don't know how to pronounce Pilar's last name, actress's last name, but Eva was flawless this week. I was so impressed. Oh, she with really I mean, she was really good, but she had a lot of meat thrown at her and she she a lot of a lot of people lobbing baseballs at her and she hit one of every one of them out of the park. She Rocky was on park. point this week. She was on point. Pilar is MVP this week. Uh huh. Yeah, she is. Pilar is MVP this week. And hands especially down. If you're going up against somebody like Ivy, that I mean, Kim, that incredible actress. The two of them are so good together, and we have always seen them pretty much in friendly mode. So for them to be and a couple of spats every once in a while, mm -hmm. whenever they would be talking about like, don't do this, get you're getting in the way of Sam and Grace, so they would get a little bit of sparks. But these are this is a full on fire between the two of them. Mm -hmm. So uh, Ivy says the whole thing about she sent the stuff from her, the computer I gave her. Blair says that doesn't mean she sent the email. Just because her email address is on it and it came from her computer does not mean that she was the one who did it. Yeah, Ivy is done with this conversation. Gwen and Ivy decide they want to go find Ethan because they're like, he must be hurting so much. Let's go comfort him, basically. Um, Ethan has chased Teresa down. He stops her and he's asking her, why did you run out of the church? He says, I know it isn't true. You didn't lie to me, did you, Teresa? Ooh. You know what Ooh. Teresa's response was there that was like so bad? Stop asking me these questions. Remember how much we love each other and just let it go. Come on, Teresa. That is not the correct. It was a cute, it was cute though. Like it was cute. I, I'm not even gonna lie, it was adorable. It was stupid, but it was adorable. Yeah. This is not the response. Like, yeah. You really oh think this God. man gonna be able to just let it go? And also, yeah. like that's that in and of itself is a suspicious answer. Exactly. She just keeps digging herself further and further. But that's that's our girl. That's what she does. She puts her foot in her mouth all the time. Yeah. And she she what she says to him is, I never sent that email. And that's when Chad intervenes and he's and God bless Chad. If 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 Ivy wasn't the MVP this week, it would be Chad, in my opinion. Um, Chad intervenes and he says, You've told me yourself, you've never loved anyone like you love Teresa. Are you really gonna let some sleazy tabloid, are you really gonna believe some sleazy tabloid over the woman you love? You know they'll print anything. You've told me yourself um, the thing, all the lies that they've printed about you. Very good. But Ethan is not deterred. I, also, you know what? Actually, this week, Pilar is MVP. And as, as much as I'm loath to say it, Ethan is actually the runner up this week. Oh. Ethan, ooh. Ethan killed it this week. I he was making all the right decisions, saying all the right things uh, for me. For me. I will I, say, for, I will say, I, I'll give him this. His line of questioning, I was very impressed with his line of questioning. Like that he, you know what I mean? Like that he was like, how do I figure this out? How how, how how do I get from A to B because or A to C because he's missing B and so like he's trying to figure it out and he's he's not as hot headed as he's usually been in the past where he just would have been like this is over it's over. I mean that's what we that's what I was expecting I was shocked he he's been this chill throughout this process uh, I don't remember I didn't remember it and so I I will give him that you are correct he, he seems to be making a turn for the more likable it mm -hmm. seems um mm -hmm. so. Lord Jesus, he says to her, he, so I'm sorry, Chad, Chad tries to kind of deflate the situation, deflect, try to get him to yeah. understand, you know, try to get him back to, you love Teresa, you know, yada, yada, yada. But Ethan is not deterred. He says to Teresa, you didn't answer my question. Like he doesn't even yeah. really acknowledge Chad. He looks, hears him out and turns right back to Teresa and says, you didn't answer my question. When did you find out that I wasn't a crane? Yeah. And she tries to deflect, like you said, and says, let's just forget about all this. Let's and get married. And I wrote here, this is tough. I'm not entirely sure how I would play this. 
This yeah. is a tough situation to be in. But at this point, it's like you caught. You got they got you dead to rights. Yeah. But here's the thing. The only people who know that Teresa knew before Ethan are Polar, Whitney, Chad, and Gwen and Rebecca. Mm -hmm. Now, what she could do, I'm not saying this is what she should do, I'm saying what she could do, she could take a chance. She could take a chance and lie, right? <laughs> she could take a yeah. chance and be like, I found out the same night you did. <laughs> yeah, what does it matter? Yeah. Because I know Whitney, I know so Whitney proud. wouldn't say anything. No. I know Pilar wouldn't say anything. Chad is a wild card, That's but I think but I think he might keep it to himself. And Rebecca and Gwen can't they're, say anything. They're screwed. They can't say anything. They can't say anything. Otherwise, ah. they they incriminate themselves. Yeah. So it's it's a tough. But then on the other side of that, again, Chad is the Chad is the outlier. It's like, mm, but if I lie and then it comes out, Chad is like, and then I, I'm done. I'm done completely. And this is where I get frustrated because if only Teresa would have a second to talk to Pilar, the two of them can confer and figure out that Gwen and Rebecca are behind all of this. I mean, it is, it's staring Pilar right in the face. Pilar has that intuition. She knows that that's exactly, because she knows Teresa. This is what I wrote down. So I don't know if we can get into this right now. But get I into it, get into it. Here is the main bottom line. Ethan, even knowing that you were not a crane, Teresa wants to be with you. That to me should have been, oh yeah, she loves me loves me it's not even about money it's never been about money why was she keeping this secret she has nothing to gain from this story coming out not a damn thing and i love that they try to spin this money thing onto them but if that were the case wouldn't she have kept that secret as hard as possible to make sure he stayed a crane this is a bull shit I'm, it so, me? I'm very glad you bring this up this is we're going to get deep into this this week, honestly, because um, I have so many things to say about it. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I I 100 percent agree with you. The bottom line is, how does this help? How do how does Teresa gain from this? It's now, nothing. they do eventually we get in some later um, conversations, we get what Gwen and Ivy think of as the rationale for why she did this, which is yeah. that she thought that Ethan had chosen Gwen over her. Oh, yeah. So she decided to scan the documents to use them against him because she was angry with him. That was exactly. that that's yeah. the narrative that they're spinning, right? Yeah. And that's I'm going to so tell you what well, actually I'm going to wait till we get there. I'm going to wait till yeah, we get yeah. there cuz I I actually went back and did a little research. I had to go back to my old notes. I went back oh, to my old notes cuz I was like Ooh. what really happened cuz I was you like went what? In, You went into the Crane archives? I went into the Crane archives. I went into the, yes, I went to the, the Crane archives in my Google Docs. <laughs> um, so, yes, he asks her point blank. She tries to deflect. Um, Ethan and tells that, her. Oh, okay. Ethan tells her, I really need to hear the truth. This is when Gwen and like Ivy show yes. up again. Mm -hmm. Gwen butts in and tells him, he says, just look at her eyes. Her, her, her eyes are telling you what her lying mouth can't. I'm not oh. gonna even lie. I'm not even gonna lie. She ate with that one. No, that's I'm not even gonna lie. Read. It was a good read. It was she good. she actually ate with that one. I, yeah. I'm gonna give it to her. I wrote that one down too. I I had it ready because I was like, that's a really good line. And yeah, she she's crying and she finally she finally well, tearfully she doesn't, she doesn't say anything. It's Ethan does look at her eyes and goes, Oh my god, you knew I wasn't a crane. And that's what causes her to she wh she whimpers it. She whimpers yeah. it. She yeah. goes, I'm, actually, what she go what she says first is, "I'm sorry, I'm so sorry," and then she says, "Yes, I knew." And then Gwen and Ivy go in for the attack. I didn't write down everything that they said, but they just kind of start attacking her. And then Teresa explains absolutely everything that happened. And here is the part where I have to give a shout out to one of our patrons, Camelia, because she made a comment on the Patreon about, or maybe it was on the Instagram. I'm not sure. I, yeah, I think it was on Instagram because I read it and it was really good. But she made a comment about the fact that nobody ever brings up the fact that Pilar 
begged Teresa not to say anything once she found out that Ethan was not a crane. Begged her. We did, and and I'm I can't believe I forgot it myself. That's right. She Be wanted to tell Ethan from the very beginning. She said, "I need to tell Ethan," and Pilar did it for Ivy. From the uh. moment she found out, from the moment she found out, she was she was actually thrilled. She was ecstatic because it meant that she felt like that meant that. Um, Gwen would drop him, that Gwen yeah. wouldn't want to be with him anymore because he doesn't have the same power and influence and he's not a crane anymore. So she thought once Gwen is absolutely out of the way, he will definitely be mine, right? Yeah. Which goes back to your point, which is that she wanted him not because of the money. She really like loves him for loves whatever him. reason. Didn't care if it was Winthrop or Crane. She don't care. It Exactly. Um, so yikes. She, I, I thank you, Camelia. Yeah, way to go. Because I had honestly forgotten all about that, but that went on for like a hundred, over a hundred episodes. Oh, yeah, she, I need to tell him, Mama. I need. No, you don't. No, you don't. Yes, I do. I mean, it was rabbit season, duck season for a long time. You're right. And and now that that has come up, I can't un unsee it. Like I can't unremember it. And now every time, I'm I'm like I'm glad that Pilar's going as hard as she's going, but I do wish she would be like I'm the one who told her not to say anything. Yeah. Because of you, Ivy. I'm the one who told her not to say anything because you, I was protecting you, bitch. And for you to gloat and sit here and scream and act like you're going to kill my my daughter after this secret that you held, which Pilar does go in a little oh, bit on her. Yeah. There's a good speech. But I do wish we had gotten a little more accountability from Pilar on this. Yeah. Actually, I That's do. That's true. Um, there is one point when um, Whitney does bring it up. She she it says it in passing that Pilar was the one who told her not to say anything. But anyway, um, she back to what is actually happening, not what I wish had happened. Um, Teresa explains exactly what happened about how she found the things by mistake. And then um, she scanned them into her computer l much later because, and, oh, and that she wanted to tell him, but she didn't because she knew it would just hurt him. And she really yeah. just didn't want him to be hurt. She knew how much being a crane meant to him, yada, yada, yada. Um, and then he, that's when somebody asks, Gwen, I think, asks, oh, oh, no, what happens is Ethan's ready to go on with the wedding. Ethan's yeah. like, okay, that's fine, cool. I, like, it was lovely because it, it was a lovely moment. And she was like, everything I did, I did it out of love for you, Ethan. And, like, he, it's fine. We're going to go back to he, Ethan's like, okay. So then G Ethan has se seemingly forgiven her. And Gwen yells, don't believe her, Ethan. Um, what she did has nothing to do with love. And so then she, stem, like, walks around, saunters around and says, you know, even if, what you say is true, Teresa. Why did you ever scan the the letters in in the first place? Why did you scan the documents? And um, Teresa admits to scanning the documents because there there was like some gray area in we didn't know how they got onto the computer in the first place. Yeah. Teresa admits that she did scan the documents, and Ethan Ethan asks her what she was planning to do with it, and. Were you? Oh, and Gwen accuses her of going to saying that she was going to use it to get back at him. Like the, yeah. she says, isn't it, isn't it obvious? Like she thought you had chosen her or chosen me over her, and she was going to use these documents to um, get back at you, which she did. She sent that letter to the the tabloid, which the timeline doesn't make enough sense for me. Yeah, but um, for for for. For her to have sent this thing to the tabloid after the the debacle at the engagement party or whatever party that night before their wedding, that's what it was. Yeah. Uh, before Gwen and Gwen and Ethan's wedding, we got so many yeah. weddings. Um, so Teresa, of course, says she swears, no, I, that's not true. That's not why I scanned the letters. Um, they ask why she never destroyed the letters. It's like it wasn't her shit to destroy. Yeah. It wasn't her stuff to destroy. Ivy would have been pissed at her if she had destroyed it. Right? Yeah. Damned if you do, damned if you don't. I mean, I see, because I, I always understood the logic of her scanning. Like, you, this is a huge thing about the paternity of the person you love. Like, 
I, I just always like a simple thing would have been like, I saved it in case, you know, it ever, you know, I wanted you to have this. Like, I think that this was proof. I, I don't know. It's just, it isn't her secret to tell. I understand. I, I, I still, I, I kind of understand why she scanned the stupid thing. It's like, so, it lost forever. You know, I, I don't know. This is where my old notes come into play. Like I said, I went into the archives. <laughs> so you had the same, like, what, what were we thinking? Right. Yeah. Yeah. What happened was, so, um, she says she didn't des uh, destroy the letter. She doesn't have any answer for why she didn't destroy it, even though it's not her stuff to destroy. That's an easy answer. But um, he's the, uh, Ethan walks off, says he needs a minute to think about everything yeah. that's going on. When he comes back, he says, you know, it's still bothering me. I don't understand why you scanned the letter in the first place. And she says the only reason she scanned the letter is because she thought she had lost him. Quote, And then I put question mark question mark question mark see my old notes so in my old notes i have um <laughs> highlighted ivy tells ethan that oh this is that's for a different note okay Teresa figures out that Ethan isn't Julian's son, right? And she's struggling with what to do. She starts to realize that Luis was right about the cranes. This is what I wrote in my notes here. Um, she then scans all the papers into her computer and says she's going to tell the world that Ethan is Sam's son. So this is all happening during that engagement party, that night before in party. She, get, she goes home because she thinks that Ethan doesn't love her, right? Because Rebecca yeah. got into her mind. She finds the papers. She she does scan them because, again, she says she's going to tell the world. But what the next part of my note says she goes back to the mansion to tell Sam Bennett. She goes back oh, like, wow. yeah, she goes back to the mansion to tell Sam Bennett. She and her mother. Thank you to my mom. Um, to her mother stops her. This is where I say again, Pilar. Yeah. Ivy, is, Ivy is at the root, but Pilar is like the stem of all yeah. of this, of all these problems. Yeah. Um, Pilar stopped her. She was ready to like blow that party up with that information. That's what she scanned it for. It wasn't like, I'm going to use this information. I think it was like, I need to have a copy just in case. That's because what I, I, I need to prove yes. this to Ethan. So yeah. yeah. And and then, of course, Pilar was not going to let her do that because she was protecting Ivy. It's tough, though, because yeah. it is it is it is damning. The fact that she the the timing of when she scanned it in and the fact that she scanned it in the first place. It yeah. is it is kind of oh, I like, get that. I Yeah, that's it is room. iffy. Oh, yeah. But upon revisiting my old notes, I kind of get it. Yeah, I kind of get it. All right. So we're going to keep going. Um. I don't know if you want to bring them into this, but Julian and Rebecca have shown up on the scene at this point. They are off first and then they make their way in, but we can. Yeah, let's let's uh, save it a little bit because yeah, we. I definitely want to talk about there. Pilar and yeah. and Rebecca. Absolutely. Yeah. Um. So she gives him his her word that she did not send the email um, and that she she says if you don't believe me there's nothing i can do she like gets really upset and kind of walks off ivy looks at ethan and says let me talk to her oh as yeah. if she's gonna help and ethan is like sure and help lets her like your mom is out for blood and you know it but right. ivy did her great like parent ivy voice was like ethan i got this like it really sounded like okay mom's gonna help very true. She def she definitely and then she switched she switched it up because she goes, let me talk to her, Ethan. And then she turns. She goes, now listen here, you little tramp. Like that's <laughs> like literally what happened. That's exactly what I have written down. That's exactly what she did. Now listen here, you little tramp. And <laughs> she just starts like going in on Teresa. We do a lot of the same fighting. It's a lot of conversations. I didn't trap him. Do you really love him? How do I believe you? You lied to me and Ethan. We both love him so much. And I wrote down Teresa and Ivy have the same motive for not telling him. It's mm -hmm. just. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what Teresa says. I, I did it the same. I did the same thing you did basically. Um, Ivy 
tells her, if you really love my son, then promise me you'll you'll do something for me. I need you to promise something for me. And Teresa anything. says, anything, 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 name it. And Ivy says, if you truly love Ethan, you will promise me that you'll stay away from him. Teresa says, I can't, we're getting married. <laughs> And then Gwen chimes in and she's like, you really think he's going to marry you after you lied to him for all these months? Yeah. And um, then while this conversation is happening, Chad is having a conversation with Ethan. Again, not MVP, but close this week, yeah. uh, Chad. He tries to get to re uh, Ethan to forgive and forget, basically. He says... You know, remember all of those hypotheticals we talked about? Because Chad has been tr laying the seed, like planting the seeds and laying the groundwork for this for yeah. a long time. Your world's going to get rocked, so let me help you. And here's the thing. Ethan has to be... I cannot believe Ethan's not more mad at Chad, with, especially Chad. Like, yeah. he has known that. He knew that he wasn't a crane, too. Yeah. Like he, and he also knew that Teresa had been friend. lying to him yeah. for a while. Like, and he kept so much from him. He kept so much from him. But anyway, Chad tells him, you know, now's the time to basically put your money where your mouth is, even though he's broke. But put your money where your mouth is. Um, <laughs> you know, it's true. He's broke. He got no money or a job. Problem. Unemployed. Yeah. You can't afford to get married. Anyway, um, he says, you know, if you really love Teresa you should talk to her. Y'all should work this out, basically. And Ethan, like, agrees. Yeah. <laughs> Ethan agrees. Um, But Teresa has, like, gone to find Ethan. She's like, I need to talk to Ethan. And she overhears this conversation between Chad and Ethan. And the part that she overhears is the part where Ethan says, and it was, uh, the whole speech was so quotable. Like, the whole thing was, it was just, like, Episode title after episode title after episode title. So I have like this whole thing bolded. Yeah. But Chad, Ethan is, is talking to Teresa. I mean, talking to Chad. Teresa overhears him saying that he um, needs to find a way to prove that, Ter that Teresa isn't lying. And he says, without that, there's no way I can marry Teresa now. Not at all. That's what he says. There's no way I can marry Teresa now. Not at all. I can't marry Teresa. And that's when Teresa quietly goes to herself, one of my favorite lines that she ever says, all, and she says it all the time. I've lost Ethan forever. Yeah. We haven't had it in a while. We yeah. haven't had that line in a while. And it's like, welcome back, lovable lunatic. I and like, welcome back. Dress, in her wedding dress, yeah. Oh, she runs off. And then Ethan, of course, right after she runs off, he clarifies that he's not going to marry her today, but he still wants to marry her. Yeah, they just need to talk through all of this stuff. Reasonable, again, Ethan. This week, Ethan is like so close to MVP. Like just, Pilar's up there, but he's close. Yeah. Um, because yeah, that's reasonable. No, I'm not gonna marry her today. Look at what look at what happened. Of course, we're not getting married today. The fact yeah. that there's even the fact that there's even any question of yeah. if anybody's getting married here today is ridiculous to me. Um, and we'll get to that with Shalise, but, uh, so, uh, let's get into all of this fighting, because this was my favorite part. While all of these different things are going on, Pil Pilar has a run-in re with Rebecca, because Rebecca and Julian have shown up, because Julian is like, obviously, Sheridan has to get married today so that she yeah. dies today so that I don't have to murder her with my bare hands, basically. They were at the mansion earlier watching the feed. He disconnected it. And he's like, all right, let's go. We got to get this wedding back on track. If not, I got to shoot Sheridan. So that's how they end up over there. And that is when Pilar confronts them, finds them both there. And it's like, what are you two doing here? Mm -hmm. uh, Julian goes off to uh, find Sheridan, leaves Rebecca with Pilar, and... Uh, <laughs> The the two of the these two women argue with each other. I did not write down everything that was said. Did you write anything down that well, was said? She, yeah, she just basic. So she, she comes in and she had saw Pilar had saw Gwen gloating with somebody over the phone. So she's like, I assume that it was you who she was talking to, and I know you are involved with this tabloid mess. So she just has so Pilar already tells them that, and she says she's like, How did Gwen know so much about the tabloid? Um, so. That's when Rebecca and and 
Pilar exchange barbs with one another and they're just like you know you're you know you should be concerned about your daughter your daughter did this so they're basically having that full-on conversation it isn't until um that she's having it out with Pilar uh that she goes well what would you expect from the daughter of a servant yes and that's when Pilar like slaps her throws her into the pond Eats it was amazing like, like maybe like a baptismal fountain or just a regular like pool yeah it was like a koi water. pond type yeah. thing yeah it was like yeah and he she and throws her into it and we yeah. get that like sassy little music that's like ooh, something scandalous happened oh it was amazing she's it just was amazing my mom was laughing. she's like and también, she's real oh, oh. También bien sexy. Ah, ah. <laughs> My mom made me laugh because she was imitating uh, uh, Rebecca. No. Wait, my favorite line, though, was Pilar yells at Rebecca, are you melting yet, Rebecca? Because she's yes. a witch. So, ah. Yeah. So, that, well, what happens after that is to, um, sh uh, well, after she got pushed in, Rebecca kind of regroups and gets up and she calls to Pilar's face. She's saying that Teresa is a lying, conniving little bitch. And that is when Pilar grabs her and basically starts drowning Rebecca in the water. She's I mean, dunking like, her head in the water. Like, it was yeah. amazing. Oh, it was it amazing. Was so and then that's when she says, they say witches melt with spl when they're splashed with water. Are you melting, Rebecca? Mm. Um, and... Uh, she goes, oh, I hate you, Pilar. I hate you. To which Pilar says, hate is bad for the soul. I try to make an exception. And if you ever talk to me like this again, I will haul you to the ocean and feed you to the sharks. Mm -hmm. It was a, it was perfect. It was amazing. Was so and I good. loved it. At one point, when Rebecca gets out of the pool, and I'm just going to kind of skip around here a little bit yeah. just to get this little bit out of the way. Yeah. But at one point, Rebecca kind of gets out of the pool. One thing I want to say is, have you ever seen Death Becomes Her? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She looked just like Goldie Hawn. She was giving Goldie Hawn. Yeah. It was giving Goldie Hawn. And she looked like as she got out of the pool, she's just like wet and drenched. I love that movie. It's one of my favorites. Anyway. They, they are turning that into a Broadway musical. Uh, I know. It's out of town tryouts in Chicago. So I do want to go see it. I'm definitely going to go see it, it. Good. Great movie. Yeah. Definitely see. Just, definitely watch it. It's on Hulu. I, I watch it like. I definitely I watch it like every year at Halloween. I love Death Becomes Her. It's such a yeah. good movie. But anyway, that's not what this show is about. We do get. But if you uh, like Passions, you would like that movie for oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, it's fun. Uh, uh, we do get a uh, we do get Tio and Tia. They show up one last time. They are like, I guess we're heading back. Uh, and they just just they decide to try and just casually drop that she is now a talk show host. They hadn't talked about it at all. <laughs> okay, I thought maybe I had just missed it. I, I was like, oh, they're they're leaning into the fact that she's really a talk show host. And she was like, oh, yes, I won't. I wish we could stay longer, but the guests are already booked and the studio, you know, I can't. Or random. Yeah, yeah, they were like, eh, might as well make her a talk show host now. But they didn't mention it at all last week. <laughs> yeah, that's so interesting. She, says she got to meet this. She knows if things don't work out with Ethan and Teresa, I met this cute Iglesias boy. So um, and then they're, you know, so that she could hook him up with maybe, you know, yeah yeah so that they do that but then they're like just remember we have you in our heart and that they're they're gone they leave um because they saw oh uh, at one point rebecca says i my dress is ruined i'll catch my death of cold um to which pilar says one can only hope <laughs> yeah one can only hope yeah. Uh, oh, Rebe yeah. you know what rebecca's about to get her lick back and i can't wait yeah so um well, she, I mean, she's already getting her lick back. Look at her. She's getting yeah. dunked in the pond and getting beat up by Pilar. <laughs> Hilarious. So later, Pilar and Whitney have a run-in with Ivy and Gwen, and they've yeah. gone, like, back into the church. Um, Ivy comes in, like, hot. She very pointedly, like, Whitney and, Whitney and Pilar are leaving the church. Gwen and Ivy are coming in, and Ivy looks at, Pilar and says, where are you going? Like to, oh, to, to go and comfort your, give your daughter a, a, a shoulder yeah. to cry on, no doubt. It was very, it was disgusting, honestly. Was like awful. this is supposed to be your best, closest friend. Yeah, you're confident. Like you can't, you, yeah, oh, it was awful. And 
she, it was just very snarky. Then Whitney defends Teresa and says, um, defends Teresa and Pilar also says, like, Ivy, that is enough. <sighs> Saying when a crime is committed. Oh, she looks at her and she says, when a crime is committed, the person responsible is usually the one who has the most to gain. Looks at Gwen. Right at Gwen. And then Gwen, Gwen only has the only thing that she can help. She's like, you, I, you know, I don't even want to talk to you or something like that. She's like throwing my mother in the fountain. What a disgrace. I'm like, shut up. Yeah. Oh, I got she, so mad. She says, what a, what a disgrace. And then Pilar rebuts and is like, the only disgrace I see here is you and your mother. Like the yeah. disgrace, the only disgrace is the person who is framing my daughter for whatever this is, you know, for this uh, tabloid story. Um, Ivy then pipes up and she says, cause, because Pilar keeps insisting that Teresa did not do this. My yeah. daughter is innocent. She didn't do this. So Ivy then says, even if she didn't send the email, she still lied to Ethan. And that's when Pilar says, Here it is. may I remind you, Mrs. Ivy Crane, that you did the same. You kept that, sec that same secret from Ethan for years. So for you to blame my daughter for something that you yourself did is total hypocrisy. Ivy concedes the point. I Ivy does concede the point. <laughs> and, sh and she says, well, I yes, I did lie to my son. Pilar interjects. She says, from the day he was born. Yeah. You lied to your son from the day he was born. And But then Ivy goes on to say, but even you can't deny that Teresa put the info in her computer and scanned it, and that's at least suspicious. Uh, again, I just want to marvel at Pilar for calling out the hypocrisy. Thank God she finally did. I, I'm, the only thing would have that would have made this conversation better is if, like I said earlier, Pilar had also said, "You made me lie for you all these years, and I made yes. my daughter lie for you." That's my yeah. If she would have said that, I think that really puts it might not ever change Ivy's mind, but it at least. At least Ivy conceded one thing. She'd have to concede that as well. You yeah. made me lie. I, I I had to lie to Sam, who was a friend of mine, like to Grace, who was a friend of mine, to Ethan, who I took care of and helped raise. You know, like all of those, Polar had mm -hmm. to lie for her, for you, for y'all's friendship. And now you're just going to come for my daughter? Like, this yeah. bullshit. And the reason she was lying in the first place is because I was keep I was telling her not to do it, like not to tell. I was trying to save you, keep you safe. Yeah. You and you've been begging me to to not tell anybody. So yeah. yeah, that's the only I really wish she had said that. But other than that, it was great. It was great. The way she stepped to Ivy and was just like, and put you know what? It shows me too that Pilar really believes at church we're all equal. Like she, uh -huh. she was like, I don't give a fuck. It's on hallowed ground, <laughs> we're all equals under the eyes of the Lord, honey. Mm -hmm. Um, and she'll drown your ass too if she thinks she if you deserve it. That was so good. I I'm gotta make sure I get that clipped this week. Oh yeah, all people will love it. Um, so in the midst of this like back and forth, Miguel comes in to tell Pilar that Sheridan and Luis have decided to go on with their wedding. Can y'all even believe it? <laughs> and, what's, you and you know, it? it speaks volumes about how Pilar handled that announcement. She was, she was, she takes in that information. She's like, okay, wow, okay, good. At least one of my kids is gonna be okay today. But she turns around and it's gonna start to re-invite Ivy and Gwen to like squash this and settle this and let's go into the church and watch them get married. And I'm like, to me, I was just like, God, Polari, sometimes you're too much of a saint. And I agree. then that is when Teresa comes running in and blurts out that she overheard that Ethan is not going to marry her. But yeah. she didn't hear the whole thing, but that she is not going to marry her. So of course, I, I, first of all, I'm so mad Again, the acting, it's Teresa, full on, full on Teresa. She's tears. And I'm like, why? Why are you giving Gwen this satisfaction? I know she's not thinking, but that would have been my first. I would have been like, Mama, I need to talk to you privately. Listen, Eric. Listen, Eric. 
our lovable lunatic is back and I love it. Yeah, I can't, I'm so, I was like, I was like foaming at the mouth. I was like, yes, I love you this know, crazy girl. You know those moments when, when uh, Tabitha doesn't have her powers and she's starting to get them back? This is exactly what's happening with Teresa. Teresa is getting her powers back. Oh, I love this her crazy girl. Oh, I returning. love this crazy girl. She comes running in hysterical. Mama, yep. mama, he doesn't love me. He's never going to marry me. <laughs> That's that pretty damn good impression. That's exactly the syllables <laughs> and the octaves that I heard it in. And, and poor Pilar, Pilar's like trying to comfort her daughter. Uh, you know, sad for her friend and is trying to comfort her friend. And Gwen like starts to gloat like, what did you think, Teresa, blah, blah, blah. And my favorite, this, I think this is probably the episode title. Winnie turns to her and says, shut up, Gwen. Yes, so, shut yes. up, Gwen. I was so shut happy. Up. Shut Whitney up. had had it. Whitney was like, we're done bitch yeah. we're done we're done yeah. like shut the fuck up what's like shut up shut up and that's i feel like that's my episode time. i'm not sure i'm not sure because yeah. there was a lot there was a it's lot a good of good contender. ones this week it's there a were a lot contender. of good ones this week but the, because i don't like gwen so much and i do want her to shut up shut up gwen i just feel i do feel that one in my soul but we'll see how it, how it all shakes out Okay, so they tell Gwen to shut up. Teresa starts just spiraling out of oh, control. It's so bad. It was oh, it was incredible to watch. I love this lunatic. I love her so much, and I just want her to win. She starts spiraling out of control at the realization that had she told um, <laughs> Ethan sooner, like Grace wouldn't have lost her baby. Because Ivy, <laughs> Ivy says. You you have ruined and turned so many lives upside down with your lies. Not just me and Ethan, but Grace and Sam Bennett. And then so Teresa has this realization. Oh my God, if if I had just told Ethan earlier that he was Sam Bennett's son, then Grace wouldn't have found out the way she found out and she wouldn't have lost her baby. I'm a horrible person. Yeah, oh my God. No, oh my god. I, I wrote down in my notes that like somehow Teresa blames herself for the loss of Grace's baby. But then not only that, so like add insult to injury. Gwen chimes in and it's like, that only just occurred to you. I'm like, oh my God. That is I so hate her. Oh no, that is legit. And that's what I'm saying. You did not need a paternity test. That girl is a Hotchkiss. That is Rebecca's daughter. Like that is a straight up Rebecca line that came out of Gwen's mouth. And I, I was like, Yep. I can't stand her. I can't stand that horrible woman. But yeah, uh, <laughs> Teresa, Teresa is just like overcome with madness, everybody. Like she's yeah. losing it, this poor girl. She says, I, I'm a horrible person. No wonder Ethan doesn't want to. <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome back, my lovable lunatic. Welcome back. We've missed you. She's just been too happy. She's been too even keeled recently. And yeah. I need this, I need this lady on 11 at all times, okay? Yeah. Whether it's happy, sad, angry, whatever it is, I need that pendulum swinging back and forth wildly, right? I love this lunatic. So yeah, she's spinning out. Um, I, and I've just missed her antics. So she, um, she, run, she runs off, of yeah. course, she, she runs off. Never to be seen again. No, not never to be seen yeah. again. But she for just, a while, we don't see her. She's going to be running all over Harmony, and I can't wait to talk about it. But she Yeah. Was... And so Pilar tells Ethan what <laughs> happened, you know, that T Teresa ran off because he said that he didn't. She overheard him saying that he didn't want to marry her. And he clarifies. He says, no, 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 no. I, I love Teresa. I want to marry her. I just don't want to marry her today. Like, I just think we should um, work things out. And Gwen, Gwen of all people says, Ethan, you have nothing to say to her. Cause he's like, I have to go find her. And he, and Gwen's like, Ethan, you have nothing to say to her. And he turns around to her and says, Gwen, Teresa is the woman I love. And that also might be the episode title. Yeah. And yeah, cause he's like, this is between us. He said it maybe twice, I think this week to Gwen, like this is between us. So like, stop. Well. 
Teresa frantically runs around town <laughs> in her wedding dress, crying, while yeah. everybody else just searches for her. Right? I mean, she's she at one point she like falls and she like implores the heavens, like, God, why, why God? Yeah. <laughs> I love her, I love her, I love her. She's in a wedding dress, running around harmony. Yeah, I just wrote Teresa running around crying in various places in harmony, <laughs> like searching for her all night long, right? And what kills me is Ethan's walking around town, showing people a picture of her and asking if they've seen her, right? And we're going to get into like the exact what happened, but yeah. he's showing people a picture of her, asking if they've seen her. Nobody's seen this girl. What he needs to be asking, have you seen a crazy lady running around in a wedding dress? Oh, that's all we needed. Have you seen a crazy lady? Because surely somebody saw that. Wouldn't that be cool if at one point he did and somebody's like, I did. I saw this woman was supposed to get married today, but somebody crashed their car and they postponed the wedding because some double wedding didn't make it. It's like another bride running around. Yeah, it's a different bride. That bride that <laughs> was supposed to have a wedding. wedding also. And she was devastated. So she started I, running around town too. It's just two, was, two runaway brides on, on the Pastor, loose. You love doing shit like this. Wouldn't it be funny if Ethan saw a bride Went and you know, hey Teresa, is it you? And it's the one of the brides from the <laughs> even pa even passions. That would be bad, even for passion standards. Like that is great. That's hilarious, though. I could actually absolutely see them doing it. Like, they, oh yeah, yeah. Somebody it's was so slacking. goofy. Somebody was slacking off. They were too busy writing great uh, great fights for Pilar and, and uh, Rebecca. <laughs> well, nobody's seen Teresa. Everybody's worried. Oh. Teresa didn't bother calling her mother all night long and everybody's very worried to, at one point Pilar is like I've already lost my husband my son I can't lose my little girl too it was devastating uh, like, I felt yeah. so bad like you said um earlier in the episode the actress who plays Pilar she was like doing a lot of heavy lifting this week yeah she did great she she did a wonderful job this week yeah um because that that just that little bit got really broke my heart yeah. It really did to her delivery. I just fathom the idea that you're at a wedding, like you're about to get married, and then you have to spend the whole day running around in your tux, running around in your like bridesmaid outfit, heels, running around trying to find the bride. Like they yeah. spend the whole evening into mid morning running around trying to find Teresa in their formal wear. And yeah, uh, me, I think, I I, think Sheridan got I to change at one yeah, point. Yeah, a couple of people changed, but me. I would have went home and changed clothes. Like oh, Harmony's yeah. not that big. You are you are not yeah. And maybe I'll see her on my way home. <laughs> right? So <laughs> so they're all looking for her. She um, you know, and their how the the Lopez Fitzgerald house is kind of like home base for all the people who are searching. So people are coming and going. Um at one point, Ethan apologizes to Pilar. Actually, first let's talk about Ethan is randomly asking people on the docks if they've seen Teresa. And he asked these random like dock workers slash fishermen if they've seen Teresa. And one of them's like, hey, she does look kind of familiar. And he's like, oh, she does? And he's like, oh, I know where I've seen her. And he pulls out the tabloid. And he's like, hey, what are you looking for her for? I know if my if my girl did the same, this thing to me, I'd be out for blood, like looking for her. And then Ethan yeah. like attacks this man. He's like, she oh, didn't yeah. do it. And she atta he attacks this man. And then Louise has to pull him off. And yeah, Louise is like, are you crazy? You can't be attacking people like this. And the random dock worker is like, are you crazy, man? I'm going to call the police. And Louise goes, yeah, I'm the police. Like yeah. he's Denzel Washington in training day. I am the cops. Yeah. It was like, King Kong ain't got shit on me. I am the police. Like, boy, the get The guys out. just run away after that. They're like, okay, yeah. Yeah, the corruption in this town is rampant. But There's another moment where this random lady is asked also, and she looked like Anne Heche. It was not Anne Heche, but the actress looked like Anne Heche. I was like, why did we even bother with this? <laughs> Cause she didn't know anything, and there was not like at least with the dock workers, it, it there was some sort of like action, some something that was you know to show us how Ethan is feeling, what where his brain's at, where yeah. his mind's at. This didn't do anything. This and, and it was kind of long. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of a long interaction. He she looks at the picture and she like gives a soliloquy, and then and at the end of it, she's like haven't seen her, never heard of her. 
Oh my god, that was so funny. Yeah, it was. Funny. It was stupid. Yeah, so they're all looking for Teresa. Eventually, everybody goes back to the house, and Ethan apologizes to Pilar, saying that this is all his fault, and it's not his fault at all. And I felt bad. I felt bad for Ethan. I felt I really felt bad for Ethan and Pilar and Sheridan and Luis actually a lot in yeah. these episodes because they were good to go. They were ready to get married. Yeah. Well, and you know what? Actually, I shouldn't feel bad for Sheridan and Luis because that's what the fuck you get for having a double wedding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is the risk you run. This is the risk you run, honestly. Yeah. So yeah. Also, I, I, I I was a little frustrated with Sheridan at the very beginning because she she was really like ready to believe that uh, Teresa did this. And I'm like... I, 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 I mean, didn't I read it that way. I did. At the very yeah. beginning, I wrote down, I was just like, she goes, why did Teresa leave the church? This makes her look so guilty. Um, and she just, she questioned it more than Louise did, obviously. So I was just a little frustrated with her. But yeah. I mean, I, granted, like sh her, you know, her investment is 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 Ethan. And so she's probably... Yeah. And, and I think... Best friend is Gwen. Mm hmm whatever she I think I think too Sheridan doesn't really know Teresa like that like of exactly. course Luis everybody who knows Teresa is like no Teresa yeah. definitely did not do this Sheridan doesn't really know Teresa that well it's not like she yeah. grew up with her you know they've really only just met in the last couple of years and yeah, yeah she, she she's like I mean yeah she it does have her email address like <laughs> You know what I mean? I wonder, like, I wonder what Teresa's uh, email address was. Like Ethan's Girl, nineteen ninety nine. Oh my god! Yeah, oh what my god! What is Teresa's email address? That's a good. Oh, I got. I'm gonna have to think on that one. What would be Teresa's? Lupe email address? Fitzgerald, nineteen. <laughs> yeah. At future Hot, Mrs. Crane. Hot, <laughs> future Mrs. Crane at hotmail.com. Hotmail yes. At AOL. Yes. Okay. So um Ethan apologized to Pilar, saying that this is all his fault, you know, that he should have just talked to Teresa. And Pilar's like, no, it's not your fault. Which is yeah. not. You know, Teresa yeah. flew off the handle for somewhat good reason, but she also she could have just interact, interjected. She could have just walked up to yeah. to Ethan and talked to him directly. And again, I know I gave her grace earlier because she's 18 and that's why she ran out of the church. But uh, yeah. you walked over there to talk to him in the first place. You overheard him having a conversation. And instead of walking into the conversation, since it's about you anyway, if, if I walk into a conversation that's about me, you better believe I'm not going to just, I'm going to, I might stand for a little while and listen what what they got to say. Yeah. And then I'm going to find my way into that conversation. I hear y'all talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> you see? Huh. Yeah. Very so, um, yeah, he he feels like it's his fault. It's not his fault. Then everybody hears over the radio a report of a Jane Doe that was found in a an abandoned warehouse in town. Yeah. <gasps> dun dun dun. And they're all worried that it's Teresa. And Sheridan says, no, it can't be Teresa. If it was Teresa, somebody would have called us by now. And then the phone rings. Da -da 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 -da. Da -da 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 -da. And it, Luis picks it up. Nobody wants to answer the phone. Everybody's looking like, duh, yeah. looking at it. Luis finally answers the phone. He says, hello. And he says, oh, my God. And Pilar likes to have a heart attack, OK? Yeah. And they're like, oh, my God, it's my Teresa. And he's like, Teresa's fine. This is Teresa on the phone, everybody. It's her. And so he gives the phone to uh, Pilar. And before Pilar can even say anything to her, Teresa just says, hey, mama, I'm fine. I just want to let you know. Click. Hangs up. Hangs up on her mama. Girl. That's so messed up. I can't even, like, the drama. I cannot imagine doing that to my mother. Yeah. I cannot imagine being out all night lost like she doesn't know where i am at 18 after this hor horrific event has happened at my wedding yep. i haven't checked in once when i finally do check in i just say i'm fine and hang up <gasps> oh yeah. my god i know no. mom oh, i would be oh, making yeah. up for that for the rest of my entire life <laughs> she would like bring it up every remember that time you hung up on me <laughs> after i was worried about you all night long i thought yeah. you were dead somewhere and you hung up on me you remember that? Yeah, not, my mama would not go for that. But uh, 
<laughs> so anyway, this is the episode about mothers. Yeah. <laughs> With cameo appearances and everything. She she's fine. She hangs up before anybody can talk to her and explain to her that Ethan does still love her and wants to marry her. Which is funny because in the room that she was in, I was like, what is she in her bedroom? And I was just like, that's so silly. Yeah, I was so confused. And then I was like, that was weird. So then I just kind of left it alone. Like, maybe she's at the bed and breakfast. Like, I didn't know where she was. Well, see, here's the thing. What happened? The the journey I went on on this, because once... (laughs) I'm like, I'm sitting here thinking, where is Teresa? Because I, I remember what happens next. But I was like, is she already there? Like, I was like, did she do that already? Like, what? And so I was like, where is Teresa? We do get the answer to this. Yeah, I was but lost. I, I actually really thought she was somewhere else or at the bed and breakfast. Because it would weird little room for her to be in. And I was like, I can't. I don't know where she's at. I actually skipped to a couple of episodes, a couple of episodes ahead to find her because I was like, what is going on here? And then I realized what was going on. I was like, ah, okay. Yeah. So anyway, and we'll get to that. We will actually get to that now. Um, soonish, actually. Um, yeah. so once everybody knows Teresa's fine, everybody's like, okay, we can at least breathe a sigh of relief. Maybe we can all go change clothes. Chad tries to convince Ethan, like, w- let's at least go home, change clothes. And I have made a note here, where does Ethan live? <laughs> has he been staying with chad i can't no because chad lives with the russells right so like right. where does ethan live because he doesn't live in the cottage with uh that lady sheridan, sheridan. <laughs> that <laughs> he woman. doesn't live there he doesn't and i thought he was st- for a while he was staying at Teresa's house li- sleeping on the pullout remember that they were gonna have sex that. on yeah. the pullout yeah. <laughs> and they didn't um yeah. where does he live I, he's yeah. homeless yeah and trying to get married <laughs> get your <laughs> life together <laughs> so they all go back to whitney's house because chad lives there and obviously whitney lives there they walk whitney to her bedroom where she's going to go in and change clothes and ethan says to her if you hear from Teresa, please let me know immediately she's like of course i will she goes into her room and Teresa's standing there in her wedding gown and she yells exclaims "Teresa!" And when, of course, Ethan and what's his name, Chad, hear this. So they kind of come back to the room because he's like, I thought I heard her say Teresa's name. Is Teresa here? He knocks on the door and Teresa tells Whitney, which was stupid, tells Whitney, please don't tell him I'm here. I'm not ready to face him yet. So Whitney, of course, covers for her because she's like a good friend. But honestly, this would not be, well, she covers for her. And she says, you know, I, I just was thinking out loud. When yeah. I said Teresa's name, I was wondering where she might be. And Chad, not Chad, but Ethan was like, oh, that makes sense. Okay. And he goes on about his Mary. And th- and this is when Chad says, yeah, come to my room. I'll, you can borrow some clothes and we can play some b-ball outside. We can do some one-on-one. I would one be playing one. basketball the day after my wedding has gone like to hell and my bride is still missing. I, let's go shoot some hoops. Also, again, where does Ethan live? Why doesn't he have any of his own clothes to change into? Like, if he's going to change clothes, shouldn't he go home and do that? Where are his clothes? Yeah. Where are his clothes? If y'all know, please, please tell me, where does Ethan live? Because I don't know. Where in the world is Ethan Winthrop clothes? Is Ethan Winthrop living? We don't know. We don't know where he lives. Um, so he's just living couch to couch, couch surfing, yeah, I guess. Couch surfing. So, um, maybe all his clothes are in his car. I don't, you know what? Leave it alone, Does Tara. He have a car. <laughs> Leave it alone. Oh, yeah, because I think the car he had belonged to the cranes. I think they repoed his shit. Now that I think about it, Ethan has nothing in this world. Yeah. Not even his woman. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Poor guy. So, um she doesn't want to talk to ethan yet so whitney covers for her um and then this is when whitney explains to her that she misunderstood ethan has been looking for you all night he loves you he still wants to get married but and that he's been devastated like that he can't find you he's so worried that he couldn't find you um and then 
<laughs> Teresa is like excited. Again, we're getting the pendulum swings and I love it. I'm back. I'm so glad we're back, back to this. Teresa is thrilled at this news. She's so excited. She's like, oh my gosh. And then she looks at out the window and sees Ethan and then her face changes. She's like, but it's all my fault. I ruined his life. I, it's my fault that he's no longer a crane. And um, she says he's been devastated and since he found out he wasn't a crane and, and she needs to take responsibility for her own actions. That's what she says. I need to take responsibility for my own actions. How do you think she thinks? What do y'all think? What do y'all think that Teresa, I'm going to give you a multiple choice quiz. How does Teresa think she should take responsibility for her actions? Does she think that she should A, go outside and talk to Ethan face to face and explain what's been going on? Does she think that she should B, write Ethan a, a letter explaining what's been going on and that she knows that he might need a little bit of space and she's going to give him the space, but hopefully they can talk soon? Or does she C, say that she has to go find Julian Crane and get him to reinstate Ethan as a crane again. What's the answer? <laughs> Pop quiz. Ay ay ay. And here we go cuz this is going to be a huge storyline moving forward. This is it. She yeah. picks C everybody. Yeah. The answer is C. She's like, I know I can make him a crane again. What? Because what, what, what? And you know what sparks this? Poor Whitney. Because Whitney probably was like, I should have kept my mouth shut. Yeah. <laughs> Whitney says to him, says to her after she says that, uh, you know, he. I'm sorry. After Teresa says, you know, it's my fault that he, you know, found out the way that he found out. Well, it's not even her fault that he found out the way that he found out. I guess it kind of is. She scanned it to her computer. Whatever. She's taking responsibility yeah. for it, for, for him finding out the way he found out. And that, it, you know, his life fell to pieces. If I had just destroyed all that evidence, he never would have known, yada, yada, yada. And then Whitney says, well, you can't help him get his life back. You can't make Ethan a crane again, which is also a great line. You can't make Ethan a crane again. And that's when she gets the sparks like, maybe I can. Maybe God I can bless, make him a crane again. God bless Whitney, Rush, Whitney Russell. Can you imagine her seeing Teresa, Teresa? Like watching Teresa's gears turn and her just going, oh God, no, 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 that's no, 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 I'm no, gonna be, that's not what I said. I'm going to be 100% honest with y'all. I love Teresa. I love watching this girl. Could I be friends with this crazy girl? Absolutely not. Could I be friends? And see, I would want to be friends with Whitney, but I'd be like, you always with that crazy ass bitch. And I can't deal with her. Like yeah. she's out of her mind. She's lovely, a lovely girl. Yeah. But she's too, like, she's a, a lot. She's too much for me. <laughs> I can't yeah. handle her. <clears throat> I would want to be friends with Whitney, but I'd be like, Whitney girl, you got to drop. <laughs> you got to drop Teresa <laughs> if we're going to hang out. Like, yeah. do not bring her. Do not bring that lady. All she's going to talk about is Ethan. I don't yeah. care about the. I don't care about her love for Ethan Crane oh. Winthrop, and yeah, no, I I couldn't be friends with Teresa, and oh, I oh. and good on Whitney for being able to do it the way she, and and do it as well as she does it. She's a good friend. She's a great she, friend. Whitney well, wins also best says, friend hey, award. You, yeah, should I remind you what happened the last time you had to hang out with Julian Crane by yourself? Which I forgot. I mean, I remember where, so here's the word we'll be hearing a lot. Do not take a shot every time you hear the location Bermuda. Bermuda. <laughs> because we are in the Bermuda phase of passions where we will not stop talking. We will not. If you say, if you Whoa. take a shot every time they say Bermuda, you will die of alcohol poisoning. Do not do that. Next passions party watch. That's going to be our party. That's going to be our drinking game. Okay, passions we'll watch party. We it won't be take Gosh. a shot, but it'll take a drink every time you hear the word Bermuda. Take a sip. Yeah. Every time you hear the word Bermuda. Yes, absolutely cuz oh my god, it comes up so much and everybody's going. Everybody's yes. going. This everyone, is a good segue. Who any is anyone is headed to Bermuda. Yeah, Whitney just reminded uh Teresa that at one point uh Julian almost went to bed with Teresa. Mm -hmm. What happened? If y'all, I will refresh your memory that. if you don't Thank remember. You. What happened was, oh Lord, this was actually one of my favorite things that ever happened in Passions. Not the part with Julian, but to, when Gwen and Ethan were planning their wedding, 
Gwen insisted that Teresa go with Ethan to their honeymoon location to check it out beforehand. I remember this now. Because she had like a business meeting in New York. So she insisted that Teresa go with him to check out. So Ethan and Teresa like go on a honeymoon, but they stay in separate rooms. Yes. But um, I, now I don't remember exactly how how Julian ended up in Teresa's room. Yeah. Um, and in the memory, oh, he's dressed like a pirate. It, it, there was like a mix up with some keys. And yeah, he's dressed oh, okay. like a pirate because he thinks that his Suzanne, if y'all remember Su the lovely Suzanne, his old his old mistress, Suzanne yeah. the maid, um, was supposed to be in the bed. and But Teresa was there instead. It was a mix up like that. And then he started to like make moves on her because she, when she kind of started to like bat her eyes open, she thought he was Ethan. Yeah. Like she, cause she had been dreaming of Ethan. And so he started to make the moves on her, but then she comes to her senses and realizes it's Julian and she sits up straight in the bed and is screaming bloody murder. Ah! In you this know. flashback, it was really funny to see Ethan's face with Julian's voice coming out of it. It was Ugh. really funny. <laughs> but yes, if y'all forgot, but, yeah. Ethan and Teresa have already been to Bermuda together on a honeymoon. <laughs> so that happened. So that's actually a great segue into Sheridan and Louise, which we're going to yeah. finish up with today. Oh, no, we still got magic. Oh, Lord. Uh -huh. I forgot. Well, Sheridan and Louise don't have too much. They it's, don't. Yeah. Um, We already talked about how they reacted to Teresa running out of the church. Yeah. Um. Meanwhile, Julian is worried that the double wedding's not going to go ahead, and we've already kind of talked about that. They show up yeah. to the church, so let's pick up where Sheridan and where yeah, where Julian and Rebecca show up, and Julian finds Sheridan, and Sheridan's like, "Why, why are you here? What are you, what do you want?" And he pulls her to the side and tells her basically that she she he feels bad for everything that he's done to her and that she should absolutely get married today like i i think that if you wait too long that you and Luis won't get married and you need to get married today sheridan is of course skeptical she says what are you yeah. up to julian yeah then Luis joins the conversation and julian tells him the same bs right and Luis has the exact same reaction what are you up to julian you know it, they're both very skeptical. In the end, though, they talk, go, have talks back and forth. Should we have our wedding? Should we not have our wedding? They decide, let's go on. Let The show must go on. Even if a car wrecks through the church, even if your sister's life is fully destroyed, even if the guy who you thought was your nephew's life has been turned upside down, does not matter. No, I mean we are having this wedding. Yeah. Um, but then the whole Teresa mess, like the Teresa mess escalates where they can't find Teresa. And so then they're like, Luis actually says, you know, we can still get married. But Sheridan says, I wouldn't yeah. feel right about our wedding day being like this. I, I like, how am I going to get married to you? And I'm going to be standing up there worried about your sister the entire time. It's reasonable, understandable. It doesn't make any sense to me that they ever was were even in talks. Yeah. The fact that anybody was in talks about continuing any wedding after Ivy yeah. drove her car into the church. Yeah, that in itself should have ended it right there. Uh, at one point, when Rebecca shows up, she's drenched because Pilar had dunked her, and Rebecca tells Louise what happened. To which Louise responds, uh, "You should consider yourself. You got off this. You know, lucky that you got off this easily." Um, she's like, "Well, I want you to arrest her." For assault and drown attempted drowning again, Luis goes. Do you think I I'm am the police? Yeah, he does it again and is like, "You think I'm gonna arrest my own mother? And anyone, if anyone deserves a dunking, it's you." Mm hmm. I am the police. Yeah, I, I just love that. Oh Luis gosh. Just walking around harmony with his badge up. Yeah, <laughs> he should wear it on like those lanyards, like they do on yeah, some of the just cop have shows. It right there. But uh, yeah, so they they don't go ahead with the wedding, yeah. and I, it should be noted that <laughs> when they before they finally decide not to go on with the wedding, before the Teresa stuff happens, they decide they are going to go on with the wedding. Yeah. Charity, it should be noted that Charity has oh, been yes. having like these horrible feelings the whole, this entire time, specifically about Sheridan. And the only one we ever see is about Sheridan, but now she's saying that they're about Sheridan and Teresa. Yeah. But we only ever see the one about Sheridan. And, and it which, is funny because throughout this, Rebecca and Julian are like, oh God, that's the girl with the visions. Because <laughs> mm -hmm, they're listening from the, the bushes. Yeah. And at one point, uh, 
uh, Charity kind of looks towards Julian and Julian looks so freaked out by Charity. I wrote it down. It just looks so damn funny. I'd be freaked out by her too. <laughs> I would be too. If you would be too. This lady is yelling doom and gloom constantly. Yeah. No, well, what happens is, okay, what happens is they said they say to everybody, hey guys, we're gonna continue with the wedding. And Charity jumps up, no, like, no, you can't get married. And then she tells them about her premonition. And she says, if you go with the, I'm worried that if you go with through with your wedding, that Sheridan will die. Louise looks at Sheridan and is like, this girl's just a little bit off. Don't get too upset. <laughs> oh, like she I, does I this all the time. Yeah. Like this is just this is just her shtick. This is just her thing. Oh, I wrote it down somewhere and it was funny because like the the over the I don't know, it's something like the over analyzation of, of a teenage girl. Somebody like they just Yeah. It it, it was it was it was funny because of the way he dismissed it, even though yeah. the, Charity is like yelling about death and um that Sheridan's gonna die. Oh, that's and I, what I if wrote it down. were me, I would just I feel like if it were me, I would just at this point, just I'd rather be safe than sorry. Yeah, so many yeah. bad things have happened at this wedding. So many and good also, things are already it's not going like on. People always keep saying charity stuff doesn't happen, but other weird shit does anyway. So why wouldn't you at least try and listen to her? Uh Rebecca's like, Yeah, that's the girl I've heard about, the girl with the visions. And Julian, and I love that. So she she's like, what if she can really see the future? To which Julian's like, uh, I think these are the ramblings of a delusional schoolgirl. And I wrote down, I was like, I love that Julian has seen a walking, talking doll who makes him fucking drinks, but he won't believe in the delusions of a schoolgirl. Right. That's actually a very good point. That's a very good point. <laughs> He's like, yeah, no, the talking dog I, I can get down with, but a girl having premonitions, I draw the line, sir. I draw the line there. That's a that's a yeah. step too far. No. So that's so, what Sheridan and Louise finally get yeah, They're like, yeah, we're calling we're calling it. They, they finally call it. They finally call it. And that's when Julian is like, I know what I have to do. I'm gonna have to kill my own sister. Alistair, of course, calls. Julian says, Yes, I know she will die. Um, then we skip to the next morning. We're doing all the the Teresa stuff. Once all of that is kind of settled, then we pick up with um Sheridan and what Louise. What do we do today? <laughs> what are we gonna do today? Yeah, we were supposed to get married yesterday. We, we we're supposed to be on our honeymoon. I just remembered we have the non-refundable tickets to to Bermuda. And apparently and they are redoing the pipes at Sheridan's cottage. So they had planned it so that way it got done while they were away. So they have nowhere to go, nothing to do. Yep. Sheridan Sheridan's having work done on her cottage. They can't go to her cottage. Then Pilar graciously um offers that they can stay with her and and they like laugh at her louise is like oh mama i don't we don't want to stay here oh, oh but, yeah they were thinking about bang town already they were like yeah yeah, gonna, yeah yeah and then there's there's like some back and forth about i wouldn't feel right about going on our honeymoon and we're not really married y'all been fucking forever now <laughs> What are you talking about? Y'all are going, they, you, it's just a couple's trip at this point. Take your trip. It didn't, I didn't understand this back and forth about, like, of course you're going on the trip. Of course you're going on the trip. Eventually we get to, they're going on the trip. Pilar yeah. like tells them it's okay. Basically gives them her blessing. In their defense, I mean, it has been about uh, 20 hours since they've had sex because they did it that morning. Yeah. Uh, and for them, that's a long time to go without blam, blam. <laughs> So Maybe. it is on their mind right now. And I mean, but they really, I'm like, it was, it was kind of gross. Cause they really do talk to Pilar and they're like, no, we are not staying here. Yeah. We're going to like crazy. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you don't want to hear what we, you don't want to hear what we got to do. That's what not we what got they, going on. they don't say it, but they acted. Luis yeah. looks at his mom like mama. Nah, it's going to go down just a little bit. Absolutely the, no I, reason. I am the police in the bedroom as well. I so. oh god. <laughs> oh, I am the police. Oh lord, I can only imagine. So, um, they're gonna go on this trip. Meanwhile, Julian has been back at his uh library or office or whatever with Rebecca, and he's kind of been oscillating between two issues. The first one is him thinking about how he's got to kill Sheridan and the other 
other is he's looking at the tabloid of and it's got Teresa's pictures in it and he's just lusting after Teresa uh -huh. over and over again. He's looking at the pictures and Rebecca keeps having to take it from him and being like, eh, excuse me, your fiance is here. Yeah. Excuse he, uh, me. She, she says something like, well, why don't you just take up with Pilar? And he's like, oh, there is something naughty about that maid's uniform. Mm. And then she she gets really upset. Like, there's her, her two biggest nemesis. So the fact that Julian is turned on by both of these two people, it really pisses off Rebecca. And Rebecca's like, well, why don't you just have her join us in the bourgeois? To which Julian is like, oh, it's like, why are you here so stupid? <laughs> And here's the thing, Rebecca shouldn't get too offended because frankly, oh, she's Julian would, after her. Well, but well, also Julian friend. Julian would get turned on by a goat in a dress. Yeah. <laughs> Let's be clear. So she shouldn't be too offended. Like yeah. it's not like yeah. like calm down, girl. He's he's just horny for any and everything. Yeah. I mean, Teresa and Paul are gorgeous women, of course, you know, oh, but yeah. he's he's not a discerning man. Yeah. Um so yes then so he's been lusting about over teresa and um and they're just honestly they're priming us for what's to come yes unfortunately because we get a knock at the door and we get yeah. some papers delivered i well i also want to talk okay so he gets he gets the paper some papers delivered and yeah. i want to talk about this because he says oh these are my divorce papers and as soon as i can fly down to the islands i can finalize it and i wrote finalize it what has this been established or explained what is this about that he has to go to bermuda there is nothing there i cannot remember it's nothing I i'm like what why would they need to go to bermuda to annul a wed or, or the divorce unless the attorney's over there but even then why go all the way to bermuda that makes no to sense to finalize his divorce yeah maybe is it that harmony maybe that he could get a faster divorce through Bermuda. maybe or maybe what? it's like taxes what is he, is he evading something i i still think you still gotta pay taxes it doesn't the, make I mean, this i don't know this makes so it makes negative sense i don't get it and maybe somebody out there can explain it to me <laughs> but it was never it, i don't think it was ever established or explained oh. i hope that it comes up again and they explain it because i don't understand the rationale behind yeah. julian has to fly down to the islands to to finalize his divorce <laughs> yeah. i don't get it did they get did they get married in bermuda i I know because remember all of the whole night uh, Julian and and Ivy. Oh right, yeah, she and, went to she went to Sam went to on Sam. their wedding night. Yeah, so they were hmm. in harmony. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. No, I don't know. But yeah, so Gwen, then... like you need to go. I'm Gwen. Sorry, uh, Rebecca's like, yeah, you need to go finalize this because I need to get married to you. And she does come up with a really good reason. She's like, if you kill your sister, uh, I and I'm your wife. I don't. I can't testify against you. So yeah. You need me. And she kind of really puts the squeeze hard. on him too. Like yeah. she kind of puts the squeeze on him. She's because he yeah. says, "I'm going." What he says is, "I'm going to take care of this divorce right after I may after I kill Sheridan," and yeah. she says, "No, no, 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 no. This is this is priority number number one. Like so that we can get married as soon as possible. Yeah. Of course, you want to go ahead and marry me because I know all about your little plot to kill your sister. Like, and he's like, yeah. "Oh yes, yes, Bex, darling, I I yeah. will, I will get get go forthwith and yeah." uh get this finalized or whatever and that's when sheridan calls him this was stupid why would sheridan ever call julian why would sheridan ever call julian she the calls guy. him and says hey i yeah. just want to let you know that i'm having some work done on the cottage this week and i won't be there that's he the says, guy's from phone call is like she has to call to let him know that and he even's like i don't care what you do in your stupid house like <laughs> yeah he says well it's yours do what you want and for all I care. And then um, she said, he says, well, where are you going to be staying? And she says, oh, Luis and I are going to Bermuda. And he realizes, oh, two birds, one Perfect. stone. Perfect. I can, I can kill my sister and eat my, eat my cake and kill my sister too. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So that's, he's going to try and kill Sheridan in Bermuda, I guess. Yeah. And we know how all of this goes. I already remember. I remember how the Bermuda trip went. Me too. It went poorly for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> it really did. It went poorly for abso absolutely yeah. everybody. Nobody comes out on top and after that trip. Yeah. No, like you could, no, I, I would say you could argue Teresa, but 
actually you kind of, she kind of gets it the no she does not get it the worst well, uh, i don't know we'll we'll, we'll get there get when we there. get there <laughs> we'll get there when we get there now we've gotten to our magic storyline and honestly i'm going to hand it over to you now eric <laughs> yeah. well <laughs> it'll, it'll it it shouldn't be too long i will start um i i, I would say let's start with uh with um charity and uh miguel and there is a little bit of charity miguel and k stuff uh, Kay and Jessica have a conversation about what's going on. Um, uh, you know, they have, you know, she keeps telling her sister, don't, don't mess with them, leave them alone. Everything's fine. And to kind of, um, again, Charity had stuff all over the place. It isn't until finally Ross shows up with his handy dandy Palm pilot, his Palm computer. Uh, he is gathering information because they are taking a trip to Warlock Island. This is another big thing that happens in Passions is we're headed to Warlock Island. Um, he heard tell of a story about two girl cousins in love with the same boy. How um, how convenient. Uh, one of the cousins was who has powers uh, is with the boy. Um, but when they get to Warlock Island, the girl dies and the boy falls in love with the girl without powers. So Kay is totally all about this story. And she thinks, you know, if something horrible happens to her cousin, she didn't do anything bad and she'll end up with Miguel and life is good. So she is totally ready to go to Warlock Island. You have some beautiful facial expressions on your face that I thought you might want to share <laughs> uh, some auditory with the listeners. I hate 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 when they do this this was so utterly transparent and i yeah. hate when they do this because yeah because give k a little more fucking credit okay yeah. like let k come up with her own little scheme okay yeah. I, that's what i want to see i want to see her come up with her own little scheme now what they're doing is k just believes that this story is going to come true because it's the it parallels what her situation is yeah. And I just thought it was so incredibly dumb it's just and so lazy. For the audience, not, not let alone the characters, but also the audience. It's like, come on, just just go to Warlock Island and and let stuff happen there. But this, yeah, it's very lazy. Let it play out and let let us just get just bring my cat bring my K on back, okay? Like let her come on back naturally. Yeah. Instead of doing this nonsense of it feels like they're trying to nudge her in the direction of and, and she's already in that direction so yeah. th this was unnecessary she's already turned in the direction of miguel and like trying to be good but still want to get miguel and like figuring that out this yeah. whole story of the girl can't see basically what k takes away from the story is that the girl in the story can't see her own future she can see other yes. people's future but she can't see her own future and that's what she's testing out i guess with yeah. charity that charity can't see her own future but haven't we seen charity have premonitions about herself yeah i, I think so i i always thought she could that, that this would be a new rule for me i didn't remember i mean i know her visions aren't always true they don't always come true there's a version of it i also know that it gets manipulated a lot but i've never heard that she can't see her own stuff i don't know so now k, k is talking like um our, our lovable lunatic saying fate's yeah. gonna take fate's gonna take care of it for me yeah because so now she thinks they're gonna go to warlock island and charity's just gonna die yeah <laughs> and he yeah he says oh ross is like yeah don't tell her because then it'd freak her out uh and she's like yeah i'm not gonna do that yeah why would i tell her that um at some point during the whole teresa confusion uh miguel calls and says i, I might not be able to go to warlock island because my sister's still missing let Char let charity know that i love her and let her know that uh she does not she just <laughs> she just says yeah miguel can't come because teresa's missing yeah it was the way miguel went about that was so annoying because actually because remember Kay is living at miguel's house yeah. right so yeah. the next morning she's at miguel's house he t says um you know we've been up all night looking for teresa still no sign blah 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 so worried yada 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 Kay says what can i do to help anything i can do to help name it i can out and he yeah. says actually there is something you can do to help you can go over to Tabitha's house and tell Charity I love her. The fuck? 
<laughs> Does the that. phone not work anymore? Yeah. Call Tabitha. You can himself. go to Charity's house and tell her I love her. And he drove that point home a lot. Like, honestly, I he didn't even tell her to tell them that he wasn't going to go to Warlock Island. He told that her as like an afterthought. It was like, yeah. I might not be able to go because I'm not going on this trip as long as my sister's missing. Reasonable. Yeah. Um, but he kept telling her, you're going to tell her, right? Tell her I love her. You tell her. Yeah, and, 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 it, and this, what's funny is they do this and it bears no fruit. It, it does nothing. Uh, Kay doesn't tell her when Miguel finally does talk to Charity. Because he like, calls her. Because he because yeah. he calls her on the phone as he could have. But that pissed me off because it's like, Miguel, you know that Kay loves you. Yeah. Why you know you that Kay is in love with you. Why would you do that? Oh, I don't like him. Yeah, I don't very, like him. To which, and then Charity's just like, oh, yeah, no, she didn't tell me. She just told me that part. Because because when he's like, did did she give you my message? And Kay kind of overhears it. It's like, oh, yeah. Um, he says he loves you. And it bears <laughs> no fruit because Charity doesn't do anything with it. Charity just kind of looks at her like, oh, yeah, she didn't tell me that. But she just told me. So big deal. Because even again, when you're a teenager, you don't give a shit about that stuff anyway, let alone if that's the man you love, right? But she did it on purpose. My thing is somebody tells me, don't forget to tell them I love them. Uh, no, what did you want to order? What did you want for McDonald's? Uh, that I don't remember, but I do not, I'm not going to tell somebody that you love them. No, like, it's like, so you know what? You know what drives me crazy, actually? And this might, this <laughs> might be my own little pet peeve is when I'm on the phone with someone and they're like, it's not so much if it's like my, like I'm on the phone with my mom and she's like, tell Naya I said, hey, or something like that. Yeah. That doesn't bother me, Fine. but I cannot stand if I'm on the phone with like a friend and I'm like, oh hey, I'm at I'm at such and such's house. Like, can I call you later? And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell tell them tell them I said hey and da da da. And you, especially if you like don't know this person, I'm not gonna tell them you said hey. Yeah, no. I'm not gonna do that. Like, yeah. I'm not gonna do it. I don't well, know. I don't, I'm all, I know I'm off subject, but I don't know why that bothers me so much. Or, no, but, or when uh, somebody but wants can... to have like a conversation with the other person through me, oh, I yeah. can't stand that. Oh, I can chime in on that too because I hate when people are like, "Oh, did you? T oh, tell them. Did they know about this, this, and that?" Um, no, no, we don't have. No, here's the phone. Here's can, the phone. Yeah, here's I'm the driving. phone. I I got other things going on. Yeah. So that, I mean, and then there'll be a little bit more charity Miguel stuff sprinkled in throughout Magic, but now it, the bulk of it is all about Tabitha and Timmy because they are still outrunning Norma. Uh, Norma is still chasing them. If you just recall last week, Norma come, has come back. She's hell bent on revenge on Tabitha and Timmy um, to satisfy the her dead father, who father is running around with them as well. Uh, she grabs both of them a couple times. There's a lot of of action with the two of them running around. It's like Scooby Doo, like we've talked about before. Um, at one point, they she asks who wants to go first, and they lovingly both say that they will both go first. And uh, they think it's sweet. Um, uh, Tabitha does another fake out. Um, Timmy bites Norma on the leg. Tabitha grabs the hatchet. Tabitha and Timmy play hot potato, basically, with father's head. Um, this is <laughs> kind of just summarizing the antics of it. Mm. Uh, they talk about calling the police, but Tabitha's like, I can't because of hidden passions. It's it's really a silly that out. That part? annoyed yeah. me so it is badly she says they can't call because of hidden passions and like timmy it's does the right attention. thing yeah. timmy does the right thing he picks up and calls 911. he's like hello there's a crazy lady and tabitha takes the phone yeah. and hangs it up and is like are you crazy we can't call because if the police come they'll figure out that i authored to hidden passions and then they'll burn us at the stake what yeah. one plus one does not equal seven lady what are you talking about <laughs> they do a lot of this to hope like we we is she out there she's not there we're good we're fine so this happens all week long i mean to the point where timmy starts making more timmies and they're like oh yeah we're done we're good now um and then norma starts hacking at the kitchen door uh sh they do try and lure norma into the basement they um, succeed yeah. they succeed they Which send her like, down into the basement this is a smart idea. And they do like uh, big acting. They're like, hey, she'll never find us in the basement. She goes down there. They do think that it's over with, but apparently the boys in the basement were scared of Norma. Mm -hmm. uh, she comes out unscathed. She's got a little bit of smoke coming out of her hair, but yeah, Norma's like, yeah, they, they were scared of me. 
She's like, so I'm not worried about them. Uh, at some point, Timmy's like, I wish you had your powers. Tabitha makes up that she might have her powers still. She talks pig Latin. Um, it does not. There's so many of these hijinks from the very beginning all to the all to the very end so to the point where i think we could skip a lot of these things oh yeah uh, she she they, tries to do, do a uh a spell on her it doesn't work but it it yeah. turned out to be kind of a ploy and uh she tricks her and and they they manage to escape yeah and they go to find sam her yes. whole thing at this point becomes as long as we stick close by Sam, Norma can't do anything to us because he's the chief of police. And so yeah. she will lay low as long as we're near Sam. Um, <laughs> so that's what they do. They go and go and find Sam and go to the wedding. Two Everybody's things. like, oh, yeah, go so ahead. I was say, two things before they do that. One, they hadn't given Hidden Passions a little plug in a while. So they do plug the book. She's like, if anyone reads that book, particularly the scenes between Sam and Ivy itself, it was just like, oh, they hadn't plugged the book in a while. So they mm -hmm. were like, hey, just a reminder, y'all, the book's out there, Walden Books, your Barnes and Nobles, go check it out. Uh, and then the other last thing is, this was so 2001, it was, it made me laugh. At one point, they look at Norma before they leave Tabitha's house, to which Tabitha says, you are the weakest link. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> I wrote that down. I did write that down. That, and it was so 2001. So it bad. Was so 2001. You remember walking around middle school saying that? Oh, we, shit? everybody would say that. Oh, yeah. It was you everyone are, watching The, the Weakest Link. It was just like we were all watching uh, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Everyone was watching The Weakest Link. And that mm -hmm. was a big, a big burn back then. It's so funny because I feel like You Are the Weakest Link. Goodbye. It got like really big. But, but uh, then I feel like is that your final answer became yeah. such a, a big thing that people still say it. Like, oh, yeah, is, is that, that your, your final, final answer? answer? Yeah. Yeah. Teachers. So, I remember teachers I, saying it a lot at school. Is that your yeah. final answer? You'd be like, uh, yeah. I, no, <laughs> I don't know. Is that, I thought it was my final answer, but you yeah. just made me think maybe I it's not. Scared. Can I phone a friend? <laughs> oh, man. So, uh, Tabitha and Timmy finally do end up they say they're going to check out the wedding but they are she makes it very clear she's so happy to see police chief Bennett um, so Norma's just kind of in the area kind of like in the shadows trying to get at them Timmy sticks his tongue out at Norma which was really really cute um, she sneaks up on them at some point she grabs them by the back of their necks and is holding them up in the air to kind of show their incredible strength um, they're trying to figure out how to escape. It looks like this is going to be the end. Um, she yeets them across the churchyard. That's how strong she is. <laughs> Norma sits on Tabitha and Timmy at some point. Mm -hmm. Um, his father's head falls off. It lands into Timmy's hands. Um, she says, it's time to say their prayers. Tabitha says, boy, you got the wrong number on that one. And it looks like <laughs> finally they're going to die. It is it is over for them. And this I, was my favorite part of the week. Me too. It was my favorite. Because, oh, it was my favorite. Can I say it? Yes, go for it. Because this okay. is just like, you're like, this is, it. they do it to us all the time, right? This is the end. Tabitha and Timmy are finally going to die. And? So Norma like raises her little axe hatchet up in the air and then and she's like on her knees right they're all on yeah. the ground and she's down on her knees ready to hack these people to death and our lovable lunatic comes to the rescue she and she doesn't even notice teresa's like bawling crying so hard and she's bolting running this is at the point when she's decided she's just gonna run all the way away so she runs and she runs over norma runs her over doesn't stop hit and run she just keeps going she does not stop and norma falls over and timmy and tabitha get up and run away get away it was amazing i gotta clip that this week i gotta clip that the idea you all want to know how distraught Teresa Lopez Fitzgerald is, is that she ran through the churchyard, did not see this large woman with an ax about to chop down on her neighbor, Tabitha Lennox, and her doll. She, nope, she didn't even turn. You don't even see Teresa's face. You only see the back of her head as she's she running. She didn't even stop. feel it. Oh. She didn't even feel it. She stepped on that woman as she ran. She didn't even feel it. 
So just so y'all know, the lovable lunatic saved the day. To, uh, for, yeah, Tabitha totally owes owes Teresa one. But that's what happens. They haul ass. They're running. It was so funny. Uh, Tabitha said, let's hide in the sewer. So we get a couple moments where they're hanging out with the Ninja Turtles. They're running around in the sewers uh, trying to avoid Norma. And Norma yes. ends up going down there as well. Norma goes down into the sewer. They go down into the sewers, okay? And it was at this point that I was like, oh, I'm so annoyed. I'm so over this. But at one point, Tabitha and Timmy are like walking through and they see like a, a body of water, like nasty yuck water. Yeah. But they also notice that Norma's like baby Bjorn that she's been carrying her dad's skull yeah. around in is floating at the top of the water. And they're like, oh my goodness, maybe she's gone. Maybe she died. Yeah. Maybe it's like she would never leave that behind. She would never leave her father. And, and um, Tab was like, I can't get close enough to see if his head is in there. And just as you think that they're like, okay, Norma comes up out of that water with her ax raised, yelling, ready to like strike. And when I say this was a legitimate jump scare, I jumped. I, ju I, I screamed. I think Naya probably heard me because I went, oh! like, I screamed. They did it so well. It scared the shit out of me. I got to make sure I, I got to make sure I clip that. That was so good. Well, it's so funny. Timmy is such a little kid sometimes because he's like picking up nasty shit in the sewer. Like, ew, what is, like, I don't know what he's doing. Uh, at some point, when Norma comes out of the water, Tabitha grabs like a bottle, like an empty bottle, like a wine bottle or champagne bottle and mm. bashes it across Norma's head. Mm. Uh, they, they, uh, they finally make it back to Tabitha's house, um, which it's funny because in the morning, they're all like, where's Tabitha at? Where's Tabitha? And one of my favorite parts is uh, that Sam is like, yeah, I, I went, I woke up this morning and fixed Tabitha's kitchen door. Like, I don't know what she did last night. This, the idea that he gets home from that, the wedding, from the David stuff, he gets home and he sees hatchet, like ax markings on there and just like, Tabitha's kind of weird. I'll fix her <laughs> door for her. Like, yeah, hey, uh, I'll fix that. Any of that. What a um, man. Yeah, but Sam, Sam does that. Uh, they start hearing noises from the basement before Tabitha and Timmy get there. And the boys in the basement are making noises. Uh, they want to get down there. Tabitha and Timmy finally make it in there. And Tabitha's like, no, no, no. I am I have rare tropical plants, Ross. So don't <laughs> be looking through my shit. Uh, and it is very obvious by all their acting that Tabitha smells of the sewers, but nobody's telling her anything. She yeah. just, she went on a, uh, her morning constitutional with Timmy to go walking around Harmony. Um, they make it very clear that, uh, Tabitha, they're, they're talking about Warlock Island and Timmy's like, oh my God, why don't we go to Warlock Island? And then Norma can't find us there. Well, we get a little backstory from Tabitha saying that, at some point, she gave the wrong scepters to the wrong warlocks, and they ended up all, like, you know, killing each other or something. And what happened it, was they ended yeah. up in a different dimension, I think, is yes. what they talk about. Like, several episodes, it came up. But then she says, and I'm glad you bring this up, she says, I can't set foot on War Warlock Island. I'll be destroyed. By who? Yeah, because I'm like, where are they? They're, Didn't you already destroy them? <laughs> so she, Yeah, so they make it sound like there's bad stuff at Warlock Island, and and Tabitha's like, if we go, uh, uh, the, these people are still mad at her or something. And but they're destroyed. Yeah, I don't. I don't she she destroyed them by giving them the yeah. wrong scepters by accident, yeah. she, according to her. Yeah. yeah. So they, but what happens is uh, Norma is looking around, and they're about to be alone at the house. So Tabitha's like, well, let me. I'm gonna go walk with the kids. I'm gonna go walk with the kids. That way, I'm safe. So they, she, her and Timmy are running down there. Um, they get, the kids get lost somehow and Tabitha loses them. She's at the docks. She ends up on the very boat that is going to Warlock Island. At that point, the kids are loading into the, into the ship. Norma is on the dock. So Tabitha and Timmy have to make a choice. Do we go to Warlock Island or do we deal with Norma? And that is kind of where they are at for. Yeah. Three. Yeah. Yep, and then Charity gets a vision of everybody, oh, basically, is which, doomed. That is, yes, Charity sees death in harmony. And I laughed so hard because 
of the people she sees she sees grace and sam which is a, a clip that we've already seen before we get the ethan um ethan and Teresa having having that we get a sharon and louise the same clips of of their pain and suffering but the one of tabitha being like on the corner fighting for her life with the doll with and the, the doll. fact yeah, because Timmy's in doll mode in the clip, but I laughed so hard because it's this idea that Charity even says, everyone is going to suffer pain, pain and suffering and death is coming for someone in harmony. And she lists everybody and she goes, Tabitha and even and her doll. Her doll. <laughs> Tabitha and her doll. Yeah, yeah. Shouldn't that it... tell her that there's something weird about that doll? Like, why is he well i mean i guess she carries him around everywhere so yeah. it would make sense that in her vision <laughs> like i said before i think it's odd that she never gets any visions about the house yeah. that has oh, the, oh, yeah. that literally has demons in it yeah <laughs> right it's yeah. weird to me like why do you keep why are you getting visions about a wedding ring that you've never even touched and visions about you know k getting married but you're not getting you can't get any visions about the demons in the basement yeah. the Which witch that lives in the house with you yeah now i'm gonna now i we have to I, we have to keep track of this wedding ring because is yeah. that gonna come into play anymore or is that i don't think so gone? i don't believe so i think it's over poison wore off it's 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 good now <laughs> I hope so. Thing? Well, and it won't. It, well, because of what happens in Bermuda, it won't have to. It won't come up yeah. again. <laughs> it won't come up again. All right. So that's the whole show, everybody. That's yeah. all she wrote. Um. Yeah. If you want to become a patron or check me out on Instagram, anything, find out where Eric is. Just check the link in the description, and you can find all of those good things thank you all for listening hanging in there with us and uh yeah that's it that's the show you are my passion for life